Good afternoon. I sincerely hope that everyone is feeling well, enjoying the warm, beautiful spring weather, and finding ways to stay healthy. Thank you for joining us today. This week, we proudly celebrate Teacher Appreciation Week and Staff Appreciation Day. The board is honored to have provided the entire Clinton City Schools family with lunch today. Uh, we hope they found it uh, delicious and very filling. Many thanks to our teachers and other staff who work hard every day to ensure that our students receive the best education possible. We admire and appreciate you for your hard work. Our vision is our destination, where we are going and when we plan to get there. Our mission is our purpose, our goal. It's why we exist. It inspires us to action. Our core values are what we believe. Our values drive us and motivate us to continue the course of action. I welcome students and their parents, staff, community, all board members. Special thanks to Mr. Lowe, and he's joined tonight by Mr. Lockwood for assisting with technology today. Today is Tuesday, May 9th, 2023, and I officially call today's meeting of the Clinton City Schools Board of Education to order. Again, thanks to everyone, teachers, other staff, students, parents, board members, and the community who makes our district the best that it can be. We recognize and appreciate your hard work and dedication. Our deepest gratitude is also extended to our front line and essential workers, those who care for us and protect us. Your hard work, commitment, and dedication are recognized and appreciated. Our thoughts are also extended to our students, our employees, and their families who are suffering from sickness and the loss of loved ones. A special remembrance is requested for our city, county, state, and national and nation as we address all the challenges that we face today. Our students of the month and their parents will join us at five o'clock. We look forward to honoring them for their hard work thus far this school year. We're also joined today in the media center by Mr. Bill Powell and uh, representing CMTA Energy Solution and uh, Ms. Garcia and Jesse Villetta, who are club members of, of Juntos. Thank you all for joining us in the media center today. Many thanks to everyone for working hard every day and for making every minute of every day count. Our goal is to realize our vision and our mission and to fulfill our core values every day. Let's continue to find ways to promote energy, pride and excitement in our schools with our students and our staff, both in our personal and professional lives. No matter who or what we are today, we can all be better tomorrow. We are stronger together. I will begin with a roll call. Um, please answer as I call your name. Board members and attorney, Mr. Clark Hales. Present, Madam Chair. Pastor Russ Emanuel. Present. Dr. Oscar Rodriguez. Present. Mr. Jeremy Edgerton has notified us that he is on the way, and we will expect Ms. Carol Worley um, by the end of today's meeting. Attorney Rebecca Williams is joining us remotely. Present. Thank you. Superintendent and staff, Dr. Wesley Johnson. Present, Madam Chair. Mrs. Emily Devane. Present. Mr. John Lowe. Present. Dr. Teresa Malanus. Present. Mrs. Sheila Peterson. Present. Dr. William Van. Present. Ms. Nicole Hayes. Present. We are also joined remotely by Mr. Eric Hasselwander from CMTA Energy Solutions. Present. Thank you. Please stand and join me in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Our middle school principal is also in the audience with us today. Thank you, Mr. Faison. Next item on the agenda is our public comment section. And we have no one registered for this section, so we'll move on to item five, approval of board agenda. Board members, you've had an opportunity to review the agenda. 
If there are no revisions, I ask for a motion to accept the agenda as written. Madam Chair, I make the motion that we accept the agenda as presented. Motion made by Pastor Emanuel. Can I get a second? Second. Second, Mr. Hales. All in favor of um, approving the agenda as written, let it be known by the word aye. 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 Any opposers? Motion carried. Thank you. Next item is approval of the consent agenda. Again, board members, you've had an opportunity to review the consent agenda items. Um, I need a motion to approve the consent agenda as it is presented. M Madam Chair, uh, I need to recuse myself from item J on the consent agenda. Let the record show that Mr. Hales has recused himself from item J, which is the personnel report of the consent agenda. Madam Chair, I will need to recuse myself as well from item J. Also let the record show that um, Pastor Emanuel has also recused himself from item J of the consent agenda. Madam Chair, I'll make a motion that we uh, approve <laughs> our guess, <laughs> but we don't have enough. <laughs> I really do. Oh, well, we might have enough in a minute. In a minute. <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> All right. Let's let's give uh, Ms. Worley and Mr. Edgerton a moment to uh, get settled. Um, we are at the approval of consent agenda. Thank you guys for appearing when you did. Um, I have a motion to uh, approve the consent agenda uh, from Dr. Rodriguez, but. Um, Pastor Emanuel and Mr. Hales have recused themselves from the personnel report. So give you a moment to catch up with us. I'll say. Motion made by Dr. Rodriguez, second by Mr. Edgerton. All in favor of approving the um, consent agenda, let it be known by the word aye. Uh, motion carried. Thank you very much. Um, now we're going to turn the next item over to Mr. Lowe. Mr. Lowe, will you tell us a little bit about CMTA Energy Solutions? Thank you, Madam Chair. Joining us today in person is Mr. Bill Powell with CMTA Energy Solutions and remotely is Mr. Eric Hasselwander. Um, again, with CMTA Energy Solutions, that is the ESCO we selected to work with Clinton City Schools and our Guaranteed Energy Savings Performance Contract, and they have an update on that project for you today at this board meeting. I'll turn it over to Mr. Powell and Mr. Hasselwander. Okay, uh, thank you, Mr. Lowe. And um, just wanted to take another opportunity to thank you all for uh, giving CMTA Energy Solutions the, the chance to build this project i think <clears throat> overall <clears throat> excuse me i think overall it was highly successful now that we've gotten through the full construction period uh we did want to give you an update on the construction kind of a brief reminder i mean you've heard a lot of these things before but just a brief reminder of um, the uh, upgrades that we worked uh with with your facilities department to install um and i'll ask uh, Mr. Eric Hasselwander to you know, uh, chime in whenever he wants. Uh, you just make sure we can hear you. Are you there, Eric? Testing one two. Yep. Yep. Okay, we got you. <laughs> okay, and then two. Just also, uh, I'd like to invite you all to ask questions as we go along. If if you want to, we'll give you a chance at the end to ask questions. But feel free to interject um, while we're presenting. If you if you have a question, uh, we like it to be more like a discussion so uh, yeah so we can jump into it next next slide please uh, we uh, installed the new chiller right here at Sampson Middle School uh, in December and uh, that went very well uh, got it running in plenty of time for the warm weather here um, it's, it's nice and comfortable in here. So I assume everything's going well, well with that machine. Uh, uh, 
I, as you all know, this was a maintenance need. Uh, it was incurring a lot of time on uh, Roy, uh, Roy and Mr. Sandlin and, and Mr. Lowe and, and repairs and expense for parts. And it, it was at the end of its use, useful life. So uh, this, this is a good energy, much more efficient. Uh, will will save you energy and and again just a reminder the guaranteed uh, annual cost savings will will pay the loan on the project so it's it's fully self funded um, okay next slide please uh, and a similar situation at Sunset Avenue School we replaced 22 heat pumps there uh, during the summer in the uh, in the Finch Street building. And uh, those are up and operational. Um, next slide, please. Uh, same school there at Sunset. Uh, we uh, replaced the two uh, boilers. Uh, uh, really, one, one is for space heating and, and one is hot water heating. And you can see the before and after pictures there. So uh, no longer being weathered outside and they're inside a mechanical room now uh get get some longevity out of those and they're they're much more efficient as as well uh, and uh there's some some maintenance advantages there too to having it in the in the mechanical room um next slide please and there um you can see the before and after pictures of of the high school gym i'm sure you all recognize and um we we did perform district-wide upgrades to the lighting to install LED lights everywhere. And you can see the before and after pictures there. So uh, a, a brighter um, environment and um, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully uh, that, that's something uh, that you all have noticed. Is, is it improved? I mean, <laughs> your, your feedback is important to us. So, um, is it, is it okay? All right, good. Okay, very good. Um, and uh, so, so we're yeah, we're happy with the results on the LED lighting. Um, and also going forward, you uh, will not have problems meeting the North Carolina High School Athletic Association requirements for for the lighting levels. Um, okay, and then also did exterior lighting on all of the exterior walls. Um, upgraded all of those fixtures to LED. Like you can see there, the, the high school. Uh, okay, good. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, exactly. I, I was excited when I rode around the, you know, the first night to really look at things. And um, yes, it's, it's better lit, safer. Um, well, I don't have to tell you. Um, I'm glad. Thank you all for, for that feedback. Um, so we have those there. Next slide, please. Okay, the um, the solar photovoltaic system there at Sunset Avenue School, uh, we're really happy with. Uh, it it has done well since uh, Mr. Lowe flipped the switch and it started producing electricity on January twentieth, which a neat aspect of that was uh, it as such being after January first of this year qualifies for the uh, Inflation Reduction Act uh, investment tax credit, uh, meaning now that's kind of a, a special incentive in the sense that in the past, those kinds of things haven't gone to nonprofits and state agencies like yourselves because you don't have a tax liability, but uh, per the U.S. government, um, this one does have that incentive available to you as a, as a direct pay incentive. And um, <clears throat> so that will help out the project. That's actually added funding that nobody accounted for in, in our project development. Uh, is there, sorry, what? Is there any rules for that funding that we use to get ERC, whatever you just said? There, it, does it knock off the bill? Does it pay to pay it down quicker? What what it, can we use that for? You, uh, yeah, there uh, there's rules for receiving the funding in the first place. My understanding is there's there's really not rules for how you use, use the money. Okay. Um, 
that's getting a bit outside of my realm. I'll, I'll go ahead and tell you since I'm not an accountant and we've, uh, Mr. Lowe has engaged uh, Ryan accounting firm to, to help with those tax filings. But my, my understanding is you, you can use that funding for your needs. Um, and uh, so, yeah, Are, any other questions? That's a good question, any, any others? Okay, so uh, this next one is a screenshot from the, uh, what we call the web dashboard, and you'll have access to this on the internet. And uh, some parts may be a bit hard to read, but uh, the, the major thing to point out here, it, it gives you all kinds of statistics about the system. It'll give you live power production, um, it shows you that status in the upper left part there, but the main part is that that day's profile on the, the bottom center where you can see that, that nice smooth uh, concave shape of the, um, that upper blue portion is the production of the, the solar. Yes, thank you. <laughs> the cursor helps. That's the solar production that that whole area there is the solar production you know it ramps up of course in the morning i mean you can see how the sun comes up you get full power at high noon and then goes back down and the light green inside of that is the the power demands of the building um you're seeing in there and for example you can see i think that's sometime around 10 a.m or so the you can see the cooling kick on and it increases more um and but that, that's just a graph of the power demands and so that light green is all being supplied by the solar system okay so that the blue parts you're you're actually exporting to duke energy for a credit and they will credit your bill for the other times that you you purchased power um and and those are if you look at the bottom half of that graph that those orange uh portions at the beginning and the end yeah right there that's that's where you're purchasing power from duke energy and you can see the morning cafeteria crew comes in really early at six and they're using using power to to cook and do do all the good things that they do so um and then as it, this is i believe it is is that can you confirm that eric i didn't hear the question sorry Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we had a fully sunny day um, there, which is why we've got that nice, smooth production curve. Um, and so um, anyway, if you, if you were if clouds were to pass by, you'd see some gaps. But this one was a, just a full sun day. Um, so, yeah, and, and I'll say, too, that um, you know, the Lord has blessed y'all with a lot of sunshine so far because <laughs> you're you're actually producing more than we have predicted so far, and so um, so so that's good. Any any excess savings accrues to Clinton City Schools. So next slide, please. Um, so the the you all I think are familiar uh, with the high school roof new roof there that has eliminated some leaks and it's it's also saving some heating and cooling energy because we added insulation there um, underneath the, the metal roof covering. I'm going to chime in on this. I just got contact from my counterpart in the surrounding school system asking about this because I think it's provoked interest um, with their two schools, particularly at Midway, because theirs is starting to look stained and it won't be long. Union will be the same way. And he was inquiring about it today. So, Okay, good. <laughs> no, you can get, you can give me, you can, yeah, you can give me his contact later. <laughs> <laughs> um okay so the the uh we we've, we've also got a construction period savings update we we did of course have uh some savings during construction period as 
ECMs as we call them, energy conservation measures, as they were being completed and, and uh, starting up, and then you start accruing savings then. So all of that savings that happened before March 15th um, were, were not guaranteed, as in they were not, they were not accounted for in, in loan payments. You didn't need them for the loan payments. So basically those all are extra um, dollars uh, for Clinton City Schools. And I'm gonna turn it over to Eric Hasselwander to continue this report. Thank you. Um, so like, like Bill said, um, all of these construction period savings are excess. They're just additional savings. Um, and so far, um, these savings look good. They're uh, trending in the right direction. Um, and this is actual meter data that you're seeing here. We typically like to compare um, the meter data to, to the contract just to, just to verify that the uh, savings um, truly are realized. Uh, next slide, please. Starting with um, Clinton City Schools, um, looks like some of our um, axes uh, got taken away here. But uh, but um, Clinton City School or Clinton High School, being the uh, the largest school, was the largest electricity and gas consumer. Um, meaning that some of these savings that you're seeing here, green being the actual and the um, orange color being the baseline, um, really at this scale. Uh, translate to a lot of dollar savings. Uh, the work that went on here was a little bit of mechanical work, but um, but mainly um, reprogramming all of the controls um, for the HVAC system. Uh, it operated much more efficient, um, and you can see that in the electricity savings. Um, you'll notice that the natural gas had a little bit uh, of an increase. Um, this is an example of, in, if you can see, in December and January, there was a little bit um, of a deviation from the baseline um, and there, there was an increase in usage. Uh, this is an example of us being able to look at these bills in real time. Um, this is the middle of construction, you know, these, these kind of things happen. Um, and we, we, we noticed um, part of our control sequences that were causing the boiler and uh, some of the hot water reheat to, to function not, not quite like we uh, intended. So we, we were able to address that uh, early on um, and you can see in the February and March uh, months there, it started to get uh, more back on track and, and trending in the right direction. Um, hey, we'll Eric, yes. excuse me, excuse me. Let me chime in here because I'm, I'm not sure everybody can see. It, it's a little hard to read from where some people are here, but I just want to make sure people understand that the charts, um, the, the orange line on top is, is your baseline and the green line below that you can see in the electrical charts on top that's that's the actual uh, meter consumption uh, during during the construction period so you can you know, already see the savings for example that upper left one you you know early on in the construction period because we were doing lighting you you could see that savings happening there so I just I just want to make sure people could see that because uh, and, and understand how those work thanks Sure. Yeah. Thanks, Bill. Um, and then just like um, through the construction phase, um, we will continue to monitor um, these types of uh, these types of uh, meter data. Um, and we call it part of our commissioning phase. It, we will we will do that for the full first full year um, for all the buildings, just to ensure that all of these systems are operating the right way and that the savings are being realized. Next slide, please. Yep. Um, one thing we noticed uh, before construction was that the high school um, was using an exceptional amount of uh, water, more than more than we would expect a high school of the size with with uh, the number of occupants. Um, and so, we did some investigating. Um, took us a little bit. But we we found out that the water company was um, not converting units properly and was charging on one of the two meters uh, about seven and a half times as much um, as was intended. Um, and so without actually reducing any of the amount of water, without replacing any fixtures or doing any actual work and just reporting this to the water company, um, we were able to reduce the amount of water 
that was being charged to the high school by 81%. And to put this into kind of like a perspective, um, this reduction over a full year would be expected to be about $25,000 in savings uh, over a 12 month period. Next, please. Moving on to Sunset Avenue. Um, similarly, um, there are electric savings um, that look pretty good. Um, Bill mentioned some of the uh, water source heat pump and um, boiler and water heater replacements that we did at this school. Um, again, there was um, something that happened in December where there was a, a large spike in natural gas use. And um, in real time, monitored that. We saw the bill come in and noticed it was high and were able to get it back on track in, in the following months. Um, again, we'll continue to, to look th through these types of uh, scenarios for the full first year of um, the project. Um, looking at LC Carr, this is kind of just an example of the rest of the schools. Um, LC Carr, Butler Avenue, and the middle school. Um, they're trending in the right direction um, from electric to natural gas savings and in all the categories, they, they are trending in the right direction. And we, um, we anticipate to see that continue uh, on to the next few months. Okay, and um, this is just a summary of the construction period savings you can see there. I mean, we broke it out by school. So um, every location, as we would expect, producing positive savings. Um, and so the total of uh, $93,109 of, of utility cost savings accumulated during the 10-month construction period. And, um, and that, that explains the, the bottom summary block there. Uh, like I was saying before, we, the zero was guaranteed financially. And, and so you, you can see the actual figure you realized. And just for comparison, um, the uh, year one full year guarantee of utility savings is $196,744. And that that per, what we call so we also call it the performance period started uh, March fifteenth, and so so we're we're in that phase right now of Eric and I looking closely at your controls and making sure you're getting the savings. So did y'all have questions? Uh, I gotta ask because you're because you're mentioning LED and savings. Uh, at, do you guys do anything like LED lighting upgrades? I know we did it outside with the parking lots and all the lights on the buildings of the schools. Is do you do anything with like the athletic field lights? Um, that's a very good question. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, we don't typically do ath athletic field lighting, um, and. And we didn't, yeah, we, 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 we didn't on this project either. Um, just they, they don't get a lot of burn time to accumulate the savings, and it's very expensive retrofit too. Um, okay. Bill, are, these, are these numbers about? what you expected as far as the savings? Yes, sir, they are. Um, the The construction period in particular is, is just harder to predict because, of course, it's dependent on when we complete each ECM construction. And uh, especially uh, like we've all seen the past two years, um, equipment deliveries and um, material deliveries. I mean, we had, we were impacted by some delays, but um, um, fortunately it didn't, it, it didn't affect our overall completion date. Um, but, but of course it's impacted by all of that. Um, and um, so it's, yeah, it, it, we're, it's in line. It's in line with what we want to see 
to see a, a positive start to the first year. It, it's right about where it should be for that for that year one guarantee savings. And you're Questions. happy with how everything's gone, Mr. Lowe? Yes, sir. Well, like uh, Bill alluded to, we had some delays. Supply chain was the main factor in some of those delays, but um, Bill and the rest of the team at CMTA worked with us diligently, keeping us informed on site. Um, Bill and I dumped ballast and did all sorts of things together and in summer hours as the project was going on. And um, Bill has been great, you know, when we encountered issues or items of concern or things we didn't understand, he's great to either come down and show us and explain, or if there's something about the new boilers at sunset that Kevin needed some information on or Roy needed some information on, Bill was great to either come down and, and train what he could or put us in contact with the right personnel for training. So it's uh, it's been a good relationship throughout the project. Yeah, that's right. And and Roy and Kevin and Mr. Lowe were all extremely good to work with. They they spent a whole lot of time um, working with us on the project and helping and um, having to respond when something came up. Uh, uh, so it, it yeah, very positive experience, I'd say. And um, so, yeah. Other questions by the board? Uh, Mr. Lowe, this might be a question for you. Do we recoup, in, recoup any of the savings from the overcharge and the, the water that he mentioned? Yes, ma'am. The city of Clinton reimbursed us for some amount of the overbilling for the previous 15 years that the high school had been in production with students and staff in the building. Um, the statute of limitations by law limited some of that, but we did receive a certain amount to recover that. And then Dr. Johnson was able to convince the interim county city manager at the time, I believe, to also offer a donation that we put towards another project that sort of added to that remuneration we received for the overbilling. Thank you. Any final remarks, Bill? Or you? Uh, no, if there's no further questions, I mean, uh, like I said, very. It's been a very positive experience for both Eric and I, and we're 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 not going anywhere anytime soon. Um, not you know, not permanently because we have 18 years of savings to guarantee. So, um, especially this first year, as Eric was talking about, you'll you'll see us around and coming when we need to come and, and keep checking things, making sure we're getting the savings every month. So thank you. Thank you, Bill. And thank you, Eric, for your hard work and for helping us in this endeavor. I appreciate it. Let me correct something that I said earlier. I said student of the month and employee of the month recognition will begin at 5. It's actually 5.30. I guess I'm so excited that they're coming to be recognized. I Wanted them to come 30 minutes early. We're doing a three months this time. So it's student month recognition is 530 this afternoon. Thank you. We'll move on to Dr. Johnson and his information items. Thank you, Madam Chair. As always, we like to begin with good news, and we have some not just good news, but some fantastic news this evening. We actually have members of our Juntos Club that's being led by Ms. Vanessa Garcia, and she is going to come forward and talk about um, a trip that they recently took to the Juntos National Convening, which was at Oregon State University. And uh, we have uh, Miss Vanessa Garcia, Charlie, Jesse, and Gabriella that are here to assist with that presentation. So I'm going to turn it over to Miss Garcia at this time and our students. Good to see everyone here tonight. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, for those of you, <laughs> for those of you who don't know me, my name is Vanessa Garcia. I am a sixth grade teacher here at the middle school, but I'm also the um, Juntos coordinator for the middle and high school. Um, 
So like Dr. Johnson said, we recently took a trip in March to Oregon State University where we kind of met with other Juntos professional and youth and we kind of just got together and um, for three days we talked. But if you could just go to the next slide, please. Um, but before that, just to kind of give you an overview, um, Juntos is a program that we have that was created at NC State. Um, it was created in 2007, and it's been here in Sampson County since 2010. So before me, it was Ms. Kathy Rivera who ran the program, and she's been keeping it around for that long. Uh, we currently have 34 students in our Juntos program from 8th through 12th grade. Um, and pretty much our challenge is just trying to have that sustainability with us. Could you get um, and this is also just an overview in North Carolina. The, the counties that you see um, highlighted in red are also other counties that participate in our Juntos program. So like I said, um, we went to Oregon for three days. Um, I have three of our students here. I have Charlie, um, our, one of our seniors. I have Jesse, who is our 10th grade. 11th grader, I'm sorry. And then we have Gabby or Gabriella, who's our 10th grader. So we had these three to kind of go out all the way to Oregon. And they did such a fantastic job. Um, we were there. Um, we pretty much were able to talk with other people from Juntos because Juntos, believe it or not, is we're starting to grow nationwide. We are in 17 states and 13 out of those 17 states were able to be at the convening. So we were able to come together and focus on the common goal, which is building a future for Juntos. How can we expand it? Um, what can we do? We just want to have that common goal, not only for us, but for our youth and for our families so that we can continue expanding. And another thing, you know, since Juntos started in 2007, it was kind of like we also celebrated our 15 years. So we celebrated what we call our quinceañera in the Hispanic culture. That is more like our sweet 15 instead of a sweet 16. So while we were there, we were able to also do that, celebrate. Um, we had performances out there. Uh, the students, I'm going to let them talk for a few minutes. Um, but if you could just go to the next slide, please. Like I said, we had 13 out of 17 states that attended. Um, and really what us professionals fo focused on is just building a consortium model. Again, like I said, we want to continue um, building off that foundation that we have started in Juntos and just making it stronger. So we're working on building a model that's going to be for the future of Juntos. We're working to build those partnerships. And we're also, like I said, working on that sustainability because that's what we've noticed that is a problem in our program right now. And as part of um, what the youth or the students focused on, they focus more on these sessions where they're the, actually the ones taking part in creating a vision statement for us. So if you could go to the next slide and I will let these three, whoever's ready to talk, y'all can talk about your experiences. Okay. All right. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Charlie. And a little bit about what happened in Oregon. So we were there for three days. And like my coordinator said, the whole point of this uh, of this convention was to see like the potential future of this club. Uh, like she mentioned, uh, we're I believe 17 states strong. And over there at Oregon, what uh, really happened was that the youth were separated from the uh, from the coordinators, and they like they got information out of us, and oh, it was good information. Uh, but uh, but uh, not every you could say 4-H uh, club in every state they're pretty much different. And like for example, here in the state of North Carolina, we have something called the Summer Academy. And that was something that other states, such as Florida and Wisconsin, they were they seemed interested. And this summer academy, uh, it gives students access to go one week to uh, North Carolina State University. They get uh, to sleep in a dorm room and uh, and so like get experience what 
actual college life uh, looks like, and that's like for a full week. So other uh, states, they were in, uh, into that, and um, other stuff that happened, uh, we got a somewhat like a mini tour of uh, the university as well. Hello, um, my name is Gabby Guerrero. Um, one of the main things that we learned over there is um, how to put our networking skills to use, not only in the club, but bring it back to our states and use it in the real world. Um, we also, we didn't even know people from our state that was going. We had people from Orange County go, Catawba and Wake Forest um, up there that we didn't even know them. And we got together in our groups and we shared things that we thought our club needed to improve on, um, how to get out in the community, what our clubs needed to focus on more, how to make f people feel more welcome. Um, as Charlie mentioned, Summer Academy, this will be my first year attending and I'm very excited to go. Um, I know they do a lot of STEM activities with us there and how to bring those activities back to our club and share it with all. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, <laughs> my name is Jessie Herrera. I'm from Clean High School. Um, my experience in Oregon with Juntos was awesome. Um, we spent time with people from different cultures and met and meet many different professionals. And all the students did many activities together, including a fun painting event where we throw paint at each other. That was fun too. <laughs> At the end of the trip, we all, we all wrote a vision a statement for Juntos program. So that was um, a time of a lot of information for learning. So thank you. So pretty much as you see, um, we have like an overview of what we had over there. Um, we had all three of ours. Um, they represented our county very well and our school district very well. Um, if you could go to the next slide, please. And these are some of the experience we got to enjoy while we were there. We were able to, again, enjoy some performances and nothing like North Carolina. They have some pretty snow. And if you see that at the bottom, it was that pretty snow. And you could just imagine, you know, we were sitting there that morning eating breakfast and we noticed it was snowing, so all the North Carolina people got up and ran outside. So, and for some of us, it was actually the first time we were on the East Coast, well, the uh, um, West Coast, I'm sorry. So that's our trip also. So we were able to enjoy a little bit, have fun, um, even though we did work a lot through those three days. But it was a really good experience, and we would like to thank you for letting us share that experience. Any questions for our group? I have a pretty lengthy experience with Juntos. Um, as a principal at Hopton High School, um, we were one of the first schools in the state of North Carolina to found a Juntos club. I think um, Vanessa said it started in 07. I think Hopton had one in 08. Um, and so I saw the club and how powerful it was for our students. Um, and uh, when I came to Clinton, was glad to know that we had a Juntos program here. Um, one of the directors, of, of Daniela, uh, she was part of the program when uh, I was at Hopton. And uh, we've had a really good experience with it. I'm glad they got to go out. I've only been to Oregon one time. Uh, and it was just to stop in as I was uh, flying to somewhere else. Uh, but uh wonderful presentation uh, we also had uh, a junto student to represent the at the national ffa convention in washington dc and um i think spoke to a room full of uh individuals for, uh, from what i from what i was told so i don't know if any of you have any comments or things you would like to say to our students or uh miss garcia I have a question, Ms. Garcia. You said your current challenge is sustainability. Talk to us a little bit about that, what's going on and what your needs are. Um, so right now, we are able to maintain physical distancing from having our spy program. Um, we also have our Spy program. But um, that grant was only for five years. So um, the 
this is our last year with that grant and we're pretty much wondering what we're going to do for the next school year because school and calls is not only a club it's a program where we have different components and those components well some of those components cost a little bit more money than others um, like summer academy you know that we're having this year um, that takes a lot of money for you know for students that we have to send students off to stay a whole week at NC State. So like just considering um, little things that help you keep those components alive. Um, right now it's only been through a grant that we've been able to maintain that. Okay. Um, have you had an opportunity to reapply for the grant or once it's over is Okay. Um, and I have not heard from them, but I know we will be talking this summer more about how we're going to move forward in the county. Okay. And last question How much was the grant? You said it was five years, and how much was it for five years? I'm not sure because this is my first year. Okay. So I'm not sure how much it was for those five years. Okay. Ms. Garcia. Oh, question. Thank you. Oh. Go ahead. You mentioned that there were folks from other counties. Do you know if they're also running out of the grant at the same time? I mean, I know you mentioned summer, but would you be able to share with your school administration once you get some information? Because um, I do believe you're right. Miss Kathy had the program and she did a lot of great things. And I know you're doing a lot of great things. And uh, I will agree the snow top on all the mountains is phenomenal. I actually spend many of many times in Idaho. So I went to Oregon to the springs, the hot water springs. So those are pretty cool. So um, we would like to know, because with the changing demographics in the area, it's affecting Sampson County, it's affecting Cumberland County, the changing demographics, and also the summer times. Now we have a lot of families that come in to our county that will become students of our system. I think your program not only fits these uh, academic points, but also fits the uh, the experiences and the personal growth of our students to be able to um, adapt to our educational system. So. Thank you, Ms. Garcia, for your leadership. It's been a while since I've seen you. <laughs> yeah, I think what I would add um, is, uh, again, this is a national program. Uh, this is not just a program in Clinton or Sampson. Uh, I do have a meeting uh, set up with Diana uh, on Monday the 15th at 2 o'clock. Uh, and so Diana and I will be meeting. Uh, I think we're meeting online that day. Um, and so one of the things that we're going to be talking about is the sustainability of this type program. Um, because the funds are... You know, you do get funds and then they're used and then they go away and just trying to sustain the program. We've actually done a pretty good job in Clinton of sustaining the funds with little money uh, for the last several years. As Vanessa noted, uh, she just took the program over this year and has done a fantastic job. Um, and um, I don't remember how her name came up, but we were glad it did. And and then there were some concerns about having a teacher to run the program. And I'm like, guys, y'all have to meet Vanessa. And so we sent her to the uh, program at NC State last summer. And they were like, they called me and they're like, oh, yeah, she's the one. Uh, so um, real excited about it. Again, uh, Diane and I have been uh, colleagues for a long time, meeting with her next Monday at 2 o'clock. So we should have no more and be able to pass some more along uh, at that time. Um, I have one more question. I, and Ms. Garcia, I'm going to move on in a few minutes. But um, I understand that you just came into the program at the last year of funding. So you don't know what the original grant, uh, the amount of the original grant, how much was left in the pot when you took over? Yeah, how much have you had to work with to do all the things you've done this year? Okay. Um, so I have to check in often with the lady that, you know, keeps our budget. But as far as like for me, like I do get paid for my services through the grant. 
and I have a limited number of hours that I can do every week, or um, I do have a limit as to how much I can earn. I can't go over a certain amount. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm pretty much more interested in how much money was available for the students, for you to, to be able to do the projects that you were doing and, and the activities, trying to figure out what did it take for you to do these things with the students? Um, with, we've been able to get our work, you know, like the educational trips and you know, those kind of things. I've been able to use club funds that um, Ms. Rivera has been able to raise through the years of fundraising Okay. So that has really helped a lot. But like, you know, the other components, like you said, if I have to do success coaching, so I have to meet one-on-one -on -one with our mm -hmm. students, that part, I'm getting paid from Slack Farm to um, do that part. But, you know, anything that's not going um, around answer. here in the community, I use the club funds for that. Yeah, I, I think I would add, <laughs> most of that is controlled at the state level. We don't have a lot of control over this grant, like hardly any. Okay, I, I, I'm, I think that um, I'm just simply asking. I mean, you've she done. Does well, she doesn't know. So I, yeah, else. I don't think she knows. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Well, I guess my okay. biggest question for you would be: Did you meet all your goals and expectations that you had that were outlined in the grant for you to be successful? So we, okay. we met our goals. Okay, yeah. so that's a success. Absolutely. So, yeah, yeah I, I think I think what, and, and, and I may be reading into what you guys are saying. We don't control the grant. The grant is not Clinton City Schools. This is a national state level grant. Oh, no, no, no. And I completely agree, Dr. Johnson. I, it's, a, it's a third so, party grant. It's from somebody else giving us the grant. Yeah, and so and they just give us, do it. they give us a sliver of money. Correct. They control how much. Correct. Yeah, and then have have Vanessa in a in a contract like I mean, she. And, and I agree. I think the biggest thing, I think where Carol was going and where I'm going at least is, did we meet the expectations? Because no, therefore, if the opportunity comes to re up for this grant or it comes down the line, did we do our due diligence to be sure? And it sounds from what she's telling us, we did. They're they're very satisfied with Cl Correct. with Clinton and the early college. I think what Carol's asking though is. <laughs> Somebody help me. There, Vanessa does. There is. <laughs> there is not a dollar amount, and I can speak from Sansom County's end because when I was there, I was over Juntos. Um, there is not a dollar amount. If there's something that we wanted to do, like in Sansom County, they have a Juntos in the summer, where it's six weeks. Um, we tell them how many we need as far as employment and they work out everything else. So as far as a budget every year, they don't say, well, you have $15,000 to spend on this. They say, okay, these are the activities that we're going to do. Tell me how many people and what you need. And that's it. But they don't give you a set budget or a dollar amount. So okay. from year to year, you don't know what activities they would like to do or if you're going to be funded in a particular area because they don't give us a budget to manage. They don't even tell us how much the grant was Let me at have the my beginning. Question back. Yeah. Okay. Bottom line is, I was trying to go about it a nice way to get to it, politically correct. Bottom line is, if the grant is running out, we don't want the program to run out. So I'm trying to get an idea of what it's going to take. If NC State doesn't give us anything, we don't want this to end. So what is it going to take for us to try to um, to put what, what would be expected of the border that we could discuss to be able to help you guys continue to be able to do the things that you were doing. And I understand that you don't have an answer because you were not administering the funds. That's what y'all are telling me, right? Okay. But then again, you know, hopefully after up. Dr. Johnson meets next week with Monday. Monday with Diana, he can get more details, but, but, but I don't correct. think we can, Kurt, we can solve your problem tonight. That's fine. But, but still, Vanessa, you know what you did and what you spent, right? 
So the information, at least from our side, we know. can use from the Correct. grant, whatever I'm allowed to, whatever I'm given permission for, I use that and I keep track of that too, but it's really somebody else that's keeping track of all of, like we have somebody at NC State that is part-time, she handles all the funding with all, with all. So she's the one that. You just answered my question. You know what you spent on our club. That's what I'm asking. Thank you. Yeah, so the only cost that we would have to keep, if the if the grant was, and and, and um, Diana told me that there were some grant opportunities that she and I were discussing on Monday. Um, but the only thing would be uh, the supplemental um, um, money that is paid to Vanessa to keep her as the coordinator of the program. Um, and so that, and then the, the parts that would take to run the club. Um, so that, that wouldn't be very expensive. Uh, but again, uh, Diana told me that she is uh, um, sure of some funds that can become available um, to continue the program here in uh, at, at Sampson, uh, Sampson and, and Clint. All right, John, if we'll go on into uh, my good news items, please, sir. Lots and lots of good news. The first thing that we're going to go over is uh, the review of the shout outs. Uh, and so you know that uh, 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 Dr. Teresa Molinas uh, sends out shout outs uh, each and every, mostly Monday, Monday afternoon. If we don't, if we're not in school on a Monday, we do it on Tuesday. Uh, so, John, if you'll click on the review of the shout outs, uh, we had several um, CHS band students who are helping our sixth grade band students learn music for the upcoming expo. And uh, we'll get into the expo in a few moments, but here are a couple of pictures of our high school band working with our sixth grade band students. Uh, then uh, more recently, we had to congratulate our visual art students and band students who participated in the all county art festival that was held at Union High School. Here's a couple of pictures from that event. Uh, we had a couple of students from, excuse me, a couple of teachers from LCK, Miss uh, uh, Rice, uh, who got some money uh, from uh, Donors Choose for Osmos Kits, and Miss Hare got some money for Sensory Manipulatives. So uh, very thankful to our teachers who continue to write grants. Shout out to our CHS National Honor Society members who collected 942 food items for both our middle school and our high school food pantry. I like the uh, hashtag, giving back. Uh, good stuff. Uh, we recently had the opportunity to, speaking of giving back, uh, we gave uh, through uh, some funds and some grants through East Carolina University, we were able to give two employees all expense paid uh, uh, masters of school administration degrees. Uh, and they're going to be starting those programs next year. Here's our first photo from Miss Natasha Faircloth. And then our next picture is of uh, Miss Charnay Whites. So they'll be moving forward. Uh, the bad news, and I shared that with uh, uh, Principal Brown the other day, is uh, as Charnay is a teacher, she will actually have to come out of the classroom. Natasha serves as a teacher one period a day, so we should be able to work that out. Uh, but Charnay will be moving into another position uh, and serving uh, Sunset a little bit differently. Basically, in that program, uh, they go to school uh, fully immersed online one day a week. And then another day of the week is supposed to be for their studies uh, on, on a Tuesday and Thursday. Uh, and so they would be uh, hours in the district to use as we see fit in their roles and their responsibilities on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. But congratulations to both Natasha and Charnay. Moving forward to bigger and brighter things. Uh, congratulations to Michelle Ganey at Sunset for being awarded the 2023 NCDOT Bicycle Helmet Initiative. And Sunset Avenue will receive 100 helmets. Uh, fantastic. Uh, you know, just speaking of that, we recently had a child that was involved in a bicycle accident. So having those helmets are very, very important. That child is doing okay, doing good. Uh, but the helmet would have definitely been a plus. Um, uh, uh, recently at LCK, we were a part of touch a truck day. The kids absolutely love this event. 
uh, and you've got some photos from that event, including uh, right there, John, uh, what uh, Principal Dirks calls the poop truck. Uh, the kids love that, uh, that event. Uh, shout out to Miss Faircloth. Uh, we just saw a picture of her, but she uh, organized an outstanding career fair for our fifth and eighth grade students here at Sampson Middle School. It was a great event. We had a, a, a well attended, uh, lots of uh, local uh, businesses, uh, also some uh, local chapters of universities were here. Really, really good event. Shout out to our pre-K for a great visit from our local consultant. Uh, they're doing great work there at LCK. And congratulations to our students who were recently uh, awarded their, uh, uh, their stole, well, not a stole, but their, um, their cord. Thank you for helping me out uh, for the high school CTE Honor Society students. Their names are listed on the right side there. And we've got a few photos from that event. We've got some athletic pictures below. Our Sampson Middle School, I don't know how many years in a row this is. Uh, you'll have to... You have to do some uh, some some research, uh, but uh, our Sampson Middle School women's soccer team uh, was regular season and tournament champions, I believe, undefeated. Uh, so that streak only, only allowed four goals off season. That streak continues. Uh, we're uh, very proud of them. I think the first time since 1996, our men's track team uh, is conference champions. Uh, so, con so if you've not seen them run and get the opportunity to do so, it is. And they will participate on Friday uh, in, at Franklinton uh, in the regionals. And then uh, we had an art show recently that was sponsored by the Sampson Art Council. And we had several students who were uh, who participated and won prizes. Their names are listed here. We had first place winners, honorable mention, uh, and second and third place winners. So congratulations to all of our art students. I know you all know this, but we have a fantastic arts program here in Dark Horse Country. Before I move on with the good news, any questions or comments about any of the C&I shout outs. We get those again. Those have all been shared, uh, usually on Monday afternoons with our staff. It was amazing watching the first track meet at uh, Clinton High School, and I don't know how many years to turn out. I, it was amazing to watch. Yes, uh, we've got some really, um, <laughs> I, the word that comes to mind is insane, amazing athletes. Uh, who the, um, can really run and move and do great things. So uh, continue to continue to lift them up, and we're hoping for good things uh, Friday. Uh, speaking of amazing and doing wonderful things, uh, we have four of our Dark Horse fellow graduates. We only had two scholarships, and we're going to get into that in just a second. But we have four young ladies uh, that have earned $40,000 plus in money and scholarships and forgivable loans to pursue education. Two of these have to return back to Clinton City if they want to have their loan forgiven. And two other ones can choose to come back to Clinton City or choose to teach in other Eastern North Carolina LEAs. We hope it's going to be Clinton City. But those four are Lacey Lucas, who was an NC uh, North Carolina State Transformational Scholarship winner and NC Teaching Fellow. So she's going to have lots of money to attend NC State. Lily Williams was also an NCSU transformational scholar and a t and uh, the NC North Carolina State Employees Credit Union scholarship. Then we had two students, Haley Strickland and Jill Casey, who received the uh, Dark Horse Fellows Forgivable Loan. Congratulations to those four young ladies, and we look forward to seeing them in four years, hopefully returning to the classroom. I think one is – uh, middle school math. Another one wants to do English or history. One is EC, and I'm missing one. I don't remember what it is, but uh, really excited and looking forward to continuing to build that program here in Clinton City Schools. Speaking of Dark Horse Fellows, uh, the Sampson Partners uh, recently uh, met with uh, Bevelyn and Teresa and provided a thousand dollar check. And to my understanding, they hope that they can make this an annual contribution to be able to provide funding for uh, Dark Horse Fellows. So super excited about that. We thank uh, Sampson Partners for that. 
Uh, Dr. Julie Malcolm, uh, you don't have to click on that picture. I know y'all all know Julie and she's sitting that there in the back. She uh, recently participated and graduated from NC Papa's DLP program, Distinguished Leadership in Practice. She is our fourth principal to graduate from that program. And we hope that Principal Westerby is going to be next. So uh, we can tell her she's going to be. But I think um, I think that we actually have Mr. Faison that's going to be attending DLP uh, uh, next year. Just to kind of let you know how long DLP has been around. I looked at my certificate in my office today. I'm a 2012 graduate of DLP, which was the second cohort. So it started in 2011. Uh, but uh, Julie um, did a great job, and we I actually got to attend her graduation event. It was a great event, and congratulations, Julie, for uh, participating. That's not easy. There's a lot of work you have to do, uh, but you will be a better principal by doing that program. Uh, administrate. We have had a lot of events to celebrate recently. Administrative Assistance Day was on April the 26th. Ms. Hayes and I actually got a chance to go to Carteret County Schools. Uh, we went to a wonderful facility, had a, a wonderful uh, program, and enjoyed a great lunch together. And, of course, we had great time riding there, she and I, and talking. National Principals Day was on May 1st. We actually had a principals meeting on Principals Day. I'm not sure how well that was planned, uh, but we gave them a gift and celebrated them. As we've already mentioned, today's National Teachers Day. We celebrated our teachers and our staffs uh, with a wonderful meal, and I sure appreciated it, and I hope that our staff did as well. Uh, National School Nurse Day is tomorrow, and Teacher Appreciation Week continues this week. So let's set a goal of making sure that we honor and support all of our educators and uh, tell them thank you for the job well done. And uh, if you see these uh, individuals in the next week or so, Please uh, share and give them thanks. Uh, class acts, uh, we have we just participated in that, I believe, the last week of April. Uh, Teresa, correct me if I'm wrong, but we had students from first through eighth grade to attend um, uh, programs uh, with music and uh, visual uh, uh, performing arts um, uh, at uh, the Agri Expo Center. Uh, and we want to thank our patrons. I'm not going to ask John to pull that up, but if you would like to see who helps to sponsor those events, it's uh, highlighted there where it says thank you to our patrons. Oh, my goodness. Uh, I was a little stressed, uh, but the expo turned out to be wonderful. Uh, we've got a lot of pictures in here from the expo. Absolutely enormous crowd that I was not expecting. Uh, I, that I don't want to thank everybody because I'll miss somebody. But there are many, many people in this room and out of this room uh, that uh, put in a lot of long hours to make the uh, last minute change to an inside event. And uh, I hope they know how, uh, uh, how how pleased I am to, to know that this event went on. It was wonderful. It was great. And we look forward to even making it bigger and better. I believe April 25th is the date. I'm getting a head nod uh, for 2024. So go ahead and put it on your calendar, April 25th, 2024. We just plan on setting up both locations, an outside location <laughs> and an inside location. And if we got to make the call, we'll be ready to move at the snap of fingers. Uh, several be uh, beginning teachers recently attended with Miss Gina Carr, the UNCWBT conference on April the 21st. Uh, uh, we had a, one of our board members uh, that uh, uh, helped and uh, uh, facilitated and worked with our ag teacher here at the middle school. And they toured West Family Farms, Nash Produce. Where else did y'all go? Leggett Farms and that's it. Leggett Farms. We got, some, we got some photos that John's kind of given you some heads up. I know that those have already been shared with our board members uh, because uh, <laughs> Mr. Hales made sure that he sent some of those out. But I just wanted to share them with everybody else. I think it was a pretty good event, wasn't it, Mr. Hales? Three great days. Kids got to see big production ag. Um, one of those places, Nash Produce, is actually the largest sweet potato uh, packer and marketer in the United States. Wow. So if you buy a sweet potato from Walmart, Trader Joe's, or go to Texas Roadhouse and buy a sweet, get a sweet potato with your steak, you're eating it from Nash Produce. So it's locally grown and... They also got to see how you don't have to own a farm to still work in agriculture, which is vital to their future, I think. There's oh, yeah. many different ways that they can, whether it be electrician, plumber, 
uh, weld or know how to repair equipment, know how to run equipment. So it, it, it was three really, really cool days. And uh, it was a pleasure to hang out with Mr. Arno. So. And food does come from the grocery store, but it's got to come from the field first. Yes, it does. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, if I smile a little more on this next one, just know that I'm a proud dad. All right. Uh, sack, uh, our women's soccer team, uh, we just finished an undefeated regular season. You want a crazy stat? In our last 44 games, our women's soccer team is 41, 1, and 2. 41, 1, and 2 in the last 44 games. That's pretty good. That's, that's, pretty good. Um, uh, and so um, we are, will be the number one seed uh, in the 2A east side of the tournament. Uh, really super excited about that. That starts next Monday. John is already bringing up. Uh, so um, highschoolovertime.com. Uh, they have, they recognize, it's, gonna hard, it's kind of hard to see this. They recognize five players that they felt uh, were player of the year finalists. And you will see some absolutely enormous schools like Ardrey Kale, Cardinal Gibbons, huge schools. And uh, Anna Perry Sinclair, uh, one of our uh, uh, three seniors, uh, is, is a finalist for Girls Soccer Player of the Year. So if you have not, please go and vote for Anna Perry uh, and continue to follow our soccer team. We hope to get a chance to play Wheatmore again uh, in the finals since they're the only team that's beat us uh, in 2A in the last two years. Uh, also in that same high school overtime, uh, they did, uh, they're taking votes, uh, and we just saw one while ago. I couldn't find a picture on this one, but uh, for the men's side of the soccer they uh, one of the games that they wanted to highlight as the game of the year was the game uh, uh, the Owen War Horses against the Clinton Dark Horses in the 2A state championship that we actually lost in penalty kicks. Uh, I was at that game. It was freezing cold, uh, but uh, we were also playing football that same night. Um, and uh, but that's nominated for soccer game of the year. And if you were there, you know why it was a fantastic, fantastic game. Noah Westbrook and Daniel Adasiak, uh, they uh, recently qualified and participated in the sand volleyball playoffs. Why is that important? First year we've ever had a program. Uh, and they uh, participated in that event this past Friday night. Uh, John, if you'll click on that, because I know I'll miss somebody on this. Go to page 11, John. It's a very long document. Uh, we've recently had several students to sign uh, from the dark horses uh, in all sports. Um, and uh, when John gets to page 11, you'll see, I think we start with Anna Perry. Uh, she's on the bottom of that page, John, right there. So congratulations to Anna Perry Sinclair for signing to play women's soccer at UNCW. We're just going to keep rolling, John, there's a bunch. Uh, congratulations to Avery Evans, who signed to play softball at NC A&T State. Uh, congratulations to Brittany Blackman, who signed to play basketball at Peace or William Peace University. Uh, I murder I murder these last names, but congratulations to Daniel Adasiak for signing to play at Mount Olive. Uh, Jorge Lamas, or George, as we like to call him, uh, signed to play soccer at William Peace. Uh, uh, Addy, uh, I'm not going to try to pronounce his name. Uh, Addy is going to be moving forward to play D1 soccer at Gardner-Webb. At several, several soccer players. Uh, Tyreek, Anias, Samir, G, Oscar, uh, and then Oscar is a baseball player. Uh, and we've got all their pictures under that. Uh, so each picture for each uh, athlete. And John, if you go back up uh, to their names, uh, uh, how do I say it? Jemias? Jemias. Jemias is a, going to NC Wesleyan. Tyreek is going to Allen University. Anias, Methodist. Samir, NC Wesleyan. And Oscar Rodriguez, who shares the name of a board member in here, uh, he's uh, moving forward to Fayetteville Tech. That's all, John. So uh, if you'll just make sure we get all their pictures. Uh, huge, huge congratulations, because not only do those individuals get to go play the sport that they love, they get to pursue it while they're earning their college degrees. Uh, and so congratulations to all of our athletes uh, who are moving forward and continuing their education. Um, 
We've got uh, just a few more good news items. Uh, our softball team uh, was regular season and tournament runner-ups. Only loss were to Midway. And if you know anything about Midway softball, if you, you only lose to Midway softball, you're doing okay. Um, uh, our men's tennis is playing right now. The uh, second round of the playoffs. Uh, and so we need to root them on to victory tonight. Uh, there's a picture of our golf team that recently uh, participated, but Brock Sumner there, uh, John can kind of point him out there the, in the gray. He's, he's pointing at him there. He will be moving on to participate in the 2A state championship for golf. Uh, and then uh, this is our batting cage at our baseball field. I like uh, – we're going to add a lid. I like that. Uh, mm -hmm. a, a lid for the ba baseball batting cage is underway. They were working on it when I pulled in this afternoon. Uh, so uh, great work there. And uh, the last thing that was yesterday evening, I believe, we had our middle school athletic banquet, uh, MVP winners there on the left, and our coach award winners on the right. So congratulations to all of our students. Congratulations to all of our student athletes. We wish all of our student athletes who that are graduating and moving forward, we wish them much success as they continue on their educational journeys and know that they'll do well representing the dark horses uh, as we move forward. Uh, several of these items I'm kind of doing, and I know I started this recently, I'm kind of doing what John's doing. So several of these items kind of just need to stay up there, and I'm highlighting anything new in yellow. We are working, you saw a lot of pictures of our dark horse fellows. We are working with attorneys uh, and some uh, other individuals uh, on forming a 501c3 for our dark horse fellows and other scholarships. You all know we've had a lot of scholarships uh, in Clinton City for a long time. We're going to kind of house those all together under a 501c3 umbrella. We're real excited about that, and, and that's just in the works. It's nothing finalized. I'm just kind of letting you know some of these. Uh, we're working with Eagle Point Properties. We've mentioned this before, but that's back on the table, the city of Clinton and others on possibly a housing project at College Street. Uh, we're looking at, we've done a survey, we've talked about doing some face-to-face -face, uh, focus groups, and uh, that would kind of be facilitated through Eagle Point Properties, uh, and we'll, as we continue to move forward, we'll let you know uh, that information as it moves forward. I uh, just wanted to let you know that we have state winners who will be participating in nationals. I'll let you know this because uh, you, we all have set aside money from the board side that goes to help fund our state winners that move forward to participate in the nationals. We have members of our Sea Perch Club that is going to be going to the University of Maryland at College Park. And then uh, a, we had a Sunset Elementary Spanish winner as well for our um, Beta Club. Uh, we are beginning work on an emerging proposal to the North Carolina Teaching Fellows Commission. We're going to be partnering with Edgecombe County, Pasquotank, uh, and at least one other uh, in trying to uh, help the NC Teaching Fellows help Eastern North Carolina even more by recognizing more and more students that would uh, have possibilities of moving forward into NC Teaching Fellows. And we already have one of our students that's going to be represented next year as an NC Teaching Fellow. Summer camp possibilities, I know we've mentioned this also. The YMCA elected to do their own uh, summer camp this summer. They are interested in partnering with us at LCK and Butler Avenue for a after school program in 2023-24. As you know, that would be similar to Project Outreach that we already have. And Project Outreach will be sponsoring a summer camp at sunset this year. Uh, tomorrow, uh, uh, we have uh, um, our group that's been partnering with Edenton Chawan. We have our third period group, Miss Reeves's class, is actually going to go uh, to visit John A. Holmes uh, tomorrow and spend time with that class. It's going to be a long day uh, for our students, but they're going to get up bright and early, travel to John A. Holmes High School there in Edenton, uh, and spend uh, part of the day, that period, uh, with the students that they've been conversing with virtually, and then they'll head back uh, to Clinton that afternoon. Uh, speaking of the Project Uplift, that program is coming to an not an end, but the year end is coming uh, before we move into our summer program. And we're going to have a, a program, or they're going to have a program. The EOY program is a popular Grove Missionary Baptist Church on Thursday, May 18th at 6 p.m. I do believe Dr. Brunson plans to attend. 
Uh, Ms. Peterson's attending for me uh, because we have soccer that night. Uh, and any of you that would like to attend, please feel free to do so. Uh, lots and lots. And after we do um, our uh, good news with our people that are, uh, our, our parents and students that are visiting us, we can talk more about this if you would like. But I just wanted to put uh, several legislative updates here that you probably need to be aware of. Uh, Senate Bill 729, I know that you received an email uh, from Attorney Rebecca on this that kind of uh, gives some safe harbor provisions uh, for pension spiking. Um, and, um, you know, we've had some, uh, uh, some questions about pension spiking in the past. This is a good assistance to that. Uh, so please make sure uh, that you look over that, especially the part that says safe harbor provisions. Uh, uh, House Bill 219, we've actually talked about this one before. Uh, make sure you read the section that says Part 7 removed. Uh, part 7 removed was uh, the, uh, I'll use the word, attack on um, Fund 8, where that you would have to provide funding that's in your Fund 8 uh, and give that, uh, make that money available to charter schools. That section has been removed currently, but it doesn't mean that it's going to stay current. It could be added back. So make sure you read that part. Uh, please, please make sure you're aware of House Bill 823. Choose your school, choose your future. There's a real good Ed NC article, and I've got that highlighted there that says Ed NC article. Make sure you look at that and are aware of what's going on with House Bill 823. Uh, and then the last one that I wanted to make sure that you were aware of was Senate Bill 692, which is community college governance. One of the things that we did in our consent agenda tonight is we move forward with moving a name forward to uh, Sampson County Schools that will ratify. If this Senate bill is, a, is adopted as it currently stands, uh, local school districts will no longer uh, provide names uh, to govern our community colleges. So make sure you're aware of that bill as well. Uh, and then the spreadsheet, uh, as you know, there is current um, um, conversation moving forward about um, uh, moving away from a, an, uh, an allotment funding of how we fund uh, public education into a weighted model. Um, there's been a lot of discussion about this. I uh, actually had a superintendent and Kathy Spencer that were on uh, Educational Matters, which is a TV program. Uh, they asked me to be on that program as well, but Clinton City actually makes out pretty well on the weighted uh, uh, funding, so I chose not to speak. But there's some information in there for you all. It says weighted budget spreadsheet. You can look at that. Um, there is uh, some uh, recent board of directors meeting and recommendations from the North Carolina High School Athletic Association. Make sure you're aware of that, which talks about uh, name, image, likeness opportunities. But then just as soon as that was approved, Senate Bill 636, oversight of high school athletics, went forward and made the crossover deadline, which would potentially strip away name image likeness uh, and put oversight maybe into a different group or a different, uh, it would actually put oversight into the state board. So make sure you're aware of Senate Bill 636 as well. The new classifications, the seven classification system was approved by majority vote. So we will move to a seven classification system in North Carolina, 1A, 2A, 3A, 4A, 5A, 6A, and 7A in 2025-26. Right now, uh, Clinton City's Clinton High School would be a 4A program. We've already talked about women's soccer, and I think we've already talked about all of that. And again, uh, I know that we are going to move forward with uh, uh, recognizing our student at student uh, student and employee uh, of the month. And then I can answer any questions you have about any of those Senate bills uh, after that time, uh, Madam Chair. Thank you, Dr. Johnson. We will um, give you the opportunity to address questions after we finish our education spotlight. Want to say um, thank you to all the parents and. Uh, maybe grandparents and siblings um, that are here tonight to be recognized uh, as employees of the month or students of the month. Uh, let's take about a three minute break and we'll transition over to this education spotlight. Thank you, parents. Give us about three minutes.
All right, if I can have your attention, please, Mr. Dirks. <laughs> if I can have your attention, please, we'll go ahead and begin our education spotlight section. 
Give you another minute. Uh, we're so honored to recognize three months this this month, uh, our March, April, and May students of the month. Congratulations, guys and gals, on a job well done. Thank you to our parents and other family members. I see some probably grandmothers and siblings here tonight for your support of these students and what they do in our schools every day. I'm going to turn this section over to Dr. Malanus and Dr. Johnson, and they're going to share some information about, about each of our students. We do have um, four, four of our principals here tonight um, to help with this recognition. Dr. Johnson. Dr. Malins. Thank you. Um, we are going to start with our March 2023 Students of the Month. And our first student is from Elsie Carr School, and it is Mr. Eric Underwood. Is Mr. Underwood here? Yay! All right. Eric is an excellent student. He is eager to learn and is consistently puts forth his best efforts to succeed in the classroom. He is helpful and respectful to his peers and his fellow classmates. Teachers and staff enjoy the positivity and smile that he brings to school with him each and every day. Eric is a hard worker, and he is very deserving of the L.C. Cars Student of the Month recognition for March. Congratulations, Eric. Congratulations, Eric. <laughs> we'll move on to Butler Avenue School, Nebus Danielle Ruiz Bardales. Daniela is a hardworking student. She works well with others and goes out of her way to show kindness to others. Daniela works to uplift her classmates if they are having a bad day. Her smile lights up the room as she uses her time wisely every day, soaking up new knowledge like a sponge. Daniela is a team player and works well in any group she is assigned. She shares supplies with others. She, she shares supplies when others are in need and compliments the hard work of her classmates. Danielle is a pleasure to teach, and we love having her in our class. Congratulations, Daniela, Butler Avenue Student of the Month for March. Next is Sunset Avenue Schools, Abiel Escalona Useche. I hope I did that right. Abiel constantly demonstrates compassion and kindness. In October, a new student joined our class who didn't know any English. Abiel is fluent in English and Spanish, so has been my main translator. Following Christmas break, we learned that our new student hadn't received any gifts, but wanted a remote control car. With his dad's help, Abiel returned to school with a remote control car for his friend. A few days later, the student brought the car back to school because he couldn't get it to work. Abiel noticed that it didn't have batteries. The next day, he came in with batteries for the car. I appreciate Abiel and his dad for their compassion for others. Abiel is a wonderful child, and I am blessed to have him as a student. Sunset Avenue Student of the Month. 
All right. Samson Middle School, Trinity Peyton Tyler. Peyton demonstrates incredible leadership skills as an active member of the SMS Fellowship of Christian Students, the Honor Society, the Beta Club, and the Student Roundtable Discussions. Peyton is a dedicated, conscientious student who is constantly prepared to learn. She gives every task her best effort. She lives out her faith and shows daily what it means to love others. Peyton's classmates not only respect her for her academic performance, but also for her caring heart and her respectful attitude. Samson Middle School is proud to present Peyton Tyler as the Student of the Month for March. In Clinton High School, Student of the Month for March is Hunter Mercer. <laughs> Hunter is always a joy to teach. He gives 100% in all of his assignments and activities. Hunter also demonstrates leadership skills as he helps to lead his teams to victory. Hunter is a well-rounded student and athlete with a cheerful disposition. We are proud to have him as CHS March Student of the Month. Hunter Mercer. Congratulations to all the March Students of the Month. We also get to celebrate our April Students of the Month. Mm -hmm. All right, we are going to start with Elsie Carr School and Catalina Garcia. Yay, there's Catalina. Catalina is an exemplary student who shows compassion to others daily. She is an amazing friend to her classmates and put forth great effort and dedication in her schoolwork. Her smile is contagious and her personality is warm and inviting. She demonstrates respect towards her teachers and is a very responsible student. Catalina is a great role model for her peers and has a bright future ahead of her. It has been a pleasure to watch her learn, grow, and excel. Congratulations to Catalina. All right. Butler Avenue School Student of the Month for April is Jesus Bartolome Velasquez. Jesus is a kind and caring student. He works hard to stay on task and always completes his work. Others look to Jesus to know and model correct classroom manners and behaviors. Jesus has grown so much emotionally and academically this year. He has become courageous when faced with trying new tasks. Jesus has also become a great reader and a mathematician. I am so proud of all of his work and have enjoyed watching him grow. Congratulations to Jesus, Butler Avenue Student of the Month for the month of April. <laughs> Sunset Avenue School Student of the Month for April is Tyrese Stewart. Tyrese is a wonderful example of character education topic for the month of April, compassion. Tyrese consistently demonstrates compassion by helping other students when they are in need. He always encourages his classmates to do their best. We are proud to have Tyrese represent Sunset Avenue School as the April Student of the Month. Our Samson Middle School Student of the Month for April is Lenz Luis June. Lenz always greets his teachers and classmates with a bright smile. He is very respectful, caring, friendly, and works hard to overcome any learning obstacle he faces. Lenz is always eager to help others and sets a wonderful example for his classmates. Congratulations, Lenz, Sampson Middle School Student of the Month for the month of April. And Clinton High School Student of the Month for the month of April is Anna Lovett. Anna is a hardworking student and leader in the classroom. She is polite, smart, and helpful. 
Anna always exhibits great worth ethics and is a wonderful role model for her peers. She is a pleasure to teach and we are proud to have her represent CHS as the April Student of the Month. Congratulations, Anna. Congratulations to all the April Students of the Month. We are on to our May Students of the Month. LC Carr School, Mr. Dirks, Joseph Clark. Is he here? All right, Joseph. Joseph is the epitome of choosing love. He chooses love and kindness daily. When he walks into our class, he greets everyone with a smile and a bright, happy good morning. He treats his peers with compassion, going out of his way to make everyone feel included and important. He loves music and dancing and dances every chance he gets. He brings joy and positivity to our class. Joseph makes me want to be a better person. No matter the situation, he has a way of making you see the good, slow down, and focus on what's important. Congratulations to Joseph Clark, the LC Carr Student of the Month. We are on to Butler Avenue Schools, Jamaica Turlington. Yay! Jamaica is a quiet student in class, but shows love to everyone around her. She rarely has a conflict with anyone and works to be friends with those around her. The students love Jamaica and knows that she will love and accept them. She is a great friend to all of her classmates and a pleasure to teach. Congratulations, Jamaica. Sunset Avenue Student of the Month for the month of May is Tiffany Santino Troches. Tiffany was selected as Student of the Month for May because she is truly an example of I Choose Love. She will help anyone who needs help and always does it with a smile. Her kind, loving spirit is an inspiration to her teachers and her peers. Congratulations to Tiffany, the Sunset Avenue Student of the Month of May. Samson Middle School Student of the Month is Camilla Malta. Camilla has a loving nature and gets along well with her teachers and peers. She is always an enthusiastic learner and can be constantly observed reading and studying. She continually strives for personal growth. We love to see her eager and happy face each morning. Congratulations to Camilla Malta, Samson Middle School Student for the Month of May. And Clinton High School Student of the Month for May is Walker Dixon. Walker, Walker goes above and beyond to lend a helping hand. He gives his time and talent freely, doing much of the marketing for Clinton High School. He, he absolutely does most of the marketing for lots of programs. We especially thank Walker for helping to create all of the promotional material for the 2023 CCS Expo. He is, a, he is just an all-around great guy with a loving personality. We are proud to have him as the CHS May Student of the Month. 
Congratulations, Walker. And if we can give a big round of applause for all three months of Students of the Month. Thank you, Dr. Molinas. That is one of our favorite activities to do at our board meetings, and we appreciate all of our parents and students that uh, came out and uh, um, participated and received your trophies and uh, or hope you're having a wonderful year. It's winding down, uh, but we thank you for your hard work and your efforts uh, this school year. We're going to move on to employees of the month, but for any of you that would like to stay, feel free to stay. But if you would like to leave at this time, uh, we're going to uh, let you slide out. But thank you again. Yeah, yeah. That was good stuff. We'll go ahead and get started. I know that we have uh, some uh, movement still going on. Take your time. Uh, enjoy this uh, opportunity to be recognized uh, for students of the month and also uh, being recognized by our board. Quite an honor, and we appreciate all of the work uh, that our students have put forward uh, this school year. Uh, it's always a joy and a pleasure to hear about how special each of our student of the months are and how they bright, uh, bright up this room and bright up their schools on a daily basis. Moving forward uh, to our employees of the month. Again, we've got three months to celebrate, so you're going to see a lot of the wonderful uh, faces uh, that bright up our schools. And again, this is Teacher and Staff Appreciation Week. So how fitting uh, that we're doing this uh, National Teacher Day. Uh, we do have some teachers in the audience and principals in the audience. and We thank them uh, for their attendance tonight. So we'll start at LCK for March student, uh, excuse me, employee of the month uh, is Miss Brooke Suggs. Ms. Suggs joined our LCK family as an NC pre-K teacher, but then transitioned into the kindergarten classroom. She has embraced the kindergarten classroom and thrives in this environment. Ms. Suggs is a team player working well with her colleagues in planning and implementing lessons and interventions inside of the classroom. She faces transitions with a smile and positive attitude and has become a great asset to our school and students. Ms. Suggs is dependable and compassionate. Her love of teaching, or her love for teaching is evident in her relationships with her students and in the structure of her classroom. LCK, March, Employee of the Month, Kindergarten Teacher, Ms. Brooke Suggs. Congratulations to Brooke. Uh, moving forward to Butler Avenue, our uh, employee of the month for March is Ms. Erin Travers. We at Butler Avenue School are excited to recognize Ms. Erin Travers as our March employee of the month. Ms. Travers does an amazing job working with her English language learners and sees all students in our school as her own. She's always willing to assist in any way that she can, whether it be parent meetings or translating documents. Ms. Travers is a team player, and we are lucky to have her as a part of the Butler Avenue School family. Uh, March Employee of the Month for Butler Avenue, Ms. Erin Travers. <laughs> Sunset Avenue School Employee of the Month for March, Carissa Rayner. Ms. Rayner serves as our EC chair. She works tirelessly planning IEP meetings, making sure the paperwork is correct and that parents are pleased. 
Ms. Rayner makes sure that the exceptional children's team and all general education teachers involved are aware of what our EC students need. She does her best to give these students the tools and support needed to succeed. As chair, she has to ensure that all EC students at SAS are taken care of. Ms. Rayner keeps a positive attitude and she is always uh, willing to lend a smile. She is kind and a wonderful leader and communicator. She deserves a pat on the back for her hard work for our students. Sunset Avenue March Employee of the Month, Ms. Caressa Rayner. <laughs> Sampson Middle School March Employee of the Month, Alina Chabot. I am honored to recognize Ms. Alina Chabot as SMS Employee of the Month for March. Ms. Chabot speaks softly but carries a big stick. She genuinely cares for the well-being of her students physically, mentally, and academically. She does what all good teachers do, and that is to teach the whole child. I present to you a pioneer of teachers, Miss Alina Chabot, Sampson Middle School. In Clinton High School, Miss Mercy Rogers. Ms. Rogers is always available to help and does so with a smile. Nothing you ask of her is ever a problem, and she is happy to assist with whatever someone needs. She's always pleasant and someone you look forward to seeing each day. Ms. Rogers does her job very well and helps keep our school looking sharp. We are grateful to have her on our team, Ms. Mercy Rogers. And our March Central Services Employee of the Month is actually with us tonight, Miss Emily Devane. <laughs> Miss Devane has been so helpful, amen, and has made a positive impact in our district. She has a can-do attitude and will stop what she is doing to answer any question and offer assistance. She is always pleasant and meets each obstacle with a smile. CCS is so happy to have such a loyal and dedicated team member. Central Service, Ms. Emily Devane. Yes, and we'll move forward to our April Employees of the Month. This is great. I'm trying to get there myself. Moving a little slow today. The suspense is killing me, even though I've got it pulled up on my computer. Uh, the LCK April Employee of the Month, we're getting there, is Miss Emily Coat. Uh, Miss Colt serves as the music and art teacher at LCK and has an amazing creativity and spunk about her. She has a positive attitude, a willingness to help others without hesitation and a compassion for others that is immeasurable. Her love for the students, staff, and families at LCK can be seen in all that she does. Miss Colt gives our students opportunities to shine through their love for art and music. No matter what kind of day you're having, a conversation with Miss Colt will most definitely put a smile on your face. We are proud to name Miss Emily Colt our LCK April Employee of the Month. Congratulations. I couldn't help but smile when I was reading that. Uh, Butler Avenue School Employee of the Month and one of my wife's goody friends, next door neighbor, Miss Nicole Boykin. Miss Boykin is determined and consistent in her pursuit to keep her class and her college career balanced while interning to be a principal. Her dedication to education is evident in her pursuit to give her best every day. Ms. Boykin is an outstanding teacher that works to meet the diverse needs of her students while holding several leadership positions on committees within the school. She is a role model for her fellow teachers and is always willing to share her activities and research with her coworkers. Juggling her many responsibilities isn't always easy, but she does it with grace. We are honored to recognize her as our April Employee of the Month, Ms. Nicole Boykin. Once a horse, always a horse. That's what her shirt said. Sunset Avenue School, Mr. Matthew Boone. Mr. Boone is an asset to our school, and we truly appreciate him. I have seen the students react to Mr. Boone in the hallway 
and in the cafeteria. They act like they really like him a lot. He takes time to speak to all of them and gives them high fives and fist bumps. That means a lot to our students. He also does a very good job keeping our school clean. Thank you, Mr. Boone. April, employee of the month, Matthew Boone. And at Sampson Middle School, Ms. Rosalind Bird. Ms. Rosalind Bird is a kind, gentle giant who has stepped up to the plate at a time when not only her teammates needed her, but when the school as a whole needed her leadership skills. Ms. Bird goes above and beyond for the cause of students. We are grateful to have her on our SMS team. April Employee of the Month, Sampson Middle School, Ms. Rosalind Bird. <laughs> Mr. Dark Horse himself, Clinton High, Mr. Hey. Mr. Kevin Kirby. Mr. Kirby always does a great job. He makes himself available during the day and after hours to help support teachers and students at CHS as well as central office staff. He is always courteous and kind. Whenever he is asked to do a task, regardless of what other task he is already doing, his response is, no problem. It's not a problem at all. Thank you for the many hats you wear, Mr. Kirby. We appreciate you. Clinton High, Kevin Kirby. No, that's funny. When he calls my phone, it says Mr. Dark Horse. That's, uh, I have it in that way. Uh, Central Service School, Dr. Angela Harding. Dr. Harding has gone above and beyond to support our schools. From stepping in for an absent bus driver and driving students home to stepping in for an absent administrator. Dr. Harding is a true team player who does whatever it takes for Clinton City Schools. We are truly blessed to have such a devoted and committed employee on our team. April Central Service Employee of the Month, Dr. Angela Harding. You go, Dr. Harding. <laughs> Y'all right there, Dr. Rodriguez? Is that water stuff? LCK, another LCK uh, for May Employee of the Month, Ms. Caitlin Faison. Ms. Faison is an essential part of LCK. She serves as one of our three EC Title I pre-K teachers. Her classroom consists of general education students as well as students with special needs, all of whom she serves full-time seven hours a day. Ms. Faison began her journey at LCK as an instructional assistant then transitioned into the teaching position. Ms. Faison tackled this transition with dedication and determination. She has thrived in the pre-K classroom while building loving relationships with her students and parents. It has been a pleasure to see her grow as a teacher this school year and really find her niche in the classroom. Congratulations to Ms. Faison, May Employee of the Month, LCK. <laughs> Wasn't Sandra here a while ago? She she took off. Uh, Butler Avenue Employee of the Month, Ms. Sandra Ward. Ms. Ward is a faith-filled woman with a huge heart. She is an excellent teacher in the classroom because of her compassion and dedication to her students. She does not approach her students in a cookie-cutter fashion. She identifies the needs of the children and then uses a flexible approach to help them reach their highest potential. Not only is she teaching her students, but she's also teaching her colleagues. She has taught those around her that teaching comes mainly from the heart, not just the mind. Her willingness to work with others and assist whenever needed does not go unnoticed. We are honored to recognize Ms. Ward as Butler Avenue's May Employee of the Month. Congratulations. <laughs> Sunset Avenue School, one of my former students, Miss Kiara Cogdale. Miss Cogdale always has a positive attitude and brings excitement to the school. Her students love her, and she puts a lot of effort into making learning fun. Miss Cogdale's kind, enthusiastic personality is truly an asset to Sunset Avenue School, and we are grateful to have her on our team and represent Sunset Avenue as the May Employee of the Month, Ms. Kiara Cogbill. 
Sampson Middle School, ploy them up, Mr. Nathan Chabot. This is Mr. Chabot's first year in an assistant principal position, and he has come in hitting the ground running. When asked how he feels about the new position, he shared that it's a lot different from being in the classroom, and he is now seeing things through a different lens. With this new perspective, he has taken the position in stride. Mr. Chabot is a go-getter and continues to thrive and work for the good of our students. May employ of the month, Samson Middle, Mr. Nathan Chabot. Clinton High School employee of the month, Mr. Lee Coleman. Mr. Coleman is a funny and caring teacher. It is evident that he is very knowledgeable in his curriculum through the informed and enthusiastic manner in which he teaches it. Mr. Coleman is an engaged and passionate teacher. We are fortunate to have him on our CHS team and to represent CHS as the May Employee of the Month, Mr. Lee Coleman. Last but certainly not least, Central Services may employ them up, Miss Alicia Leva. The word no is not in Miss Leva's vocabulary. She is willing to do anything she can do to help. She has a positive attitude every day. The love she shows to her colleagues and our students is amazing. We are elated to have her as a part of our CCS Dark Horse family and represent our Central Services as our May Employee of the Month, Miss Alicia Leva. <laughs> Dr. Van says he's glad to have her. Yes. So congratulations to all our employees of the month, uh, and they uh, serve us in so many capacities. We represented so many different people tonight, and we thank them for their tireless work and efforts. If it's okay with the Madam Chair, I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Molinas because we've had a couple of teachers that have been sitting here a while, and they have a they have a presentation to do, and then I, we want to get them home to their families. So if that's okay with you. Well, we appreciate you. So we're going to bring you on up. Um, yes, please come on. I appreciate you guys waiting so long. Um, Ms. Christy Smith and Mrs. Nicole Melvin Thompson were both um, fortunate enough to attend the NCAT Teacher Leadership Academy. Normally, we only have one position that's afforded to Clinton City Schools. We were able to add another, another teacher. So we normally send our Clinton City Schools Teacher of the Year, which was Ms. Chrissy Smith, and then we were able to add on um, Ms. Nicole Melvin Thompson. So we're excited, and they're going to share just a little bit about what happened at NCAT Teacher Leadership Academy with you guys. Um, so we were lucky enough that we got to go to NCAT. This was both of our first experience with NCAT, and it was absolutely wonderful. Um, it's something that we've already been sharing with all of our colleagues. And something that we learned while we were there is that NCAT was actually started by Jean Powell, who is from Clinton, North Carolina. Um, and she started it because she thought about places like the governor's school, that the best and the brightest students went to. They came back. They were excited about their learning. Um, and she said, you know, we should have a place like this for our teachers. So that is how NCAT came to be. So um, we we're going to be discussing teacher collaboration, um, teacher advocacy, student success, and just the general experience that we have. So a big part of everything we did that whole week was just collaborating with other teachers from Eastern North Carolina. And it was just wonderful to be around like-minded people, you know, people that really are invested in their schools. Um, that are already in leadership positions, but um, it's kind of taking you to that next level of helping your colleagues become leaders. Um, so I really, really enjoyed that. Um, so this was one of our definitions that we came up with the first day. And you can see how we added to it each day, because as we learn more about leadership, about the trust that it entails and how to become a good leader, we kind of had to add to it. Um, we said it's empowering others through collaboration while facilitating passionate reflection and adjustment all through the lens of service to and the growth of others. Because I saw what leadership is about. It's about serving others. And in a school system, it's all about, you know, us as educators, it's about serving our clients who are our students, right? Making sure that we're giving them the best service that we possibly can and helping other teachers to be able to do the same.
And we, with that, with that one screen, we also had the um, opportunity to walk around and look at the other groups and see what was different. And that's how the um, other words became part of our mm -hmm. definition because we saw the like-mindedness that we had in words we may have forgotten that we could have added to ours. So that was very good. <laughs> okay, um, this was, this is one of my favorite parts. Um, we basically, um, the public forum, as you guys know, they had on um, the top 10 issues before, but it was so broad, they wanted to narrow it down to the top five. So um, after going through these top five issues, we developed five groups and we all miraculously chose different mm -hmm. issues. Like she didn't give us one, it's just you choose what you wanna do. So we, it was very, school term. It was very cool that we chose something different because we got to hear everyone's perspective. And seeing this, we've been talking about this in TAG about, you know, competitive comp comp compensation for educators, growing and retaining the diversity of the teacher pipeline, um, addressing the root causes of mental health and school safety crisis, because that's, a, that's to me, that's one of the top major issues for me. Um, preparing students for the world that they live in and implementing and monitoring and evaluating the comprehensive remedial plan. And we all actually have PowerPoints that we've shared in our one drive for NCAT if we ever wanted to go and see it and use it to present to maybe mm -hmm. you guys or someone. Or even at the state level. Yeah. If we decided to go do that. Because we've learned, you know, we have to use our voices mm -hmm. and say what we're going through because if not... Yeah no one will know yeah you know, we are our own best advocates so right. um that's very very important that you know we are educated that we're educating each other on all these issues that are going on you know what is going on politically in our state um so it was it was just very refreshing to be able mm -hmm. to talk to other people about that to learn more about it and i will say um talking about growing retaining um teacher pipeline and some of the things that i you know we could really speak highly of clinton city schools yeah. and some of the things that we were already doing that some of the other school systems were not doing um like for in a few minutes i'll go to that i think on the next slide if you hit the next slide um Talking about leadership roles, especially how we've had so much support in our national board certification. You know, a lot of them talked about how you know, it was very hard for them. So they had no support. So that was wonderful that we've had that um, happening here. And something else that I thought was very interesting, and I had heard some, I've heard a little bit of talk about it here, was the lead and extended reach teachers. Um, we talked about that and how that's such a wonderful way to get experienced teachers um, out into other classrooms to help, you know, because we have teachers there, but some of them, they just need a little extra push and a little extra help, a little extra support. And being a BT mentor, um, that's one of the biggest things I've seen is that they just kind of feel alone sometimes, you know, and they don't feel the support that they need because we are stretched so thin. And if we did have something like lead teachers or extended reach teachers that they have an allotted amount of time that they could give to our beginning teachers or struggling teachers, I think that would really make a huge difference um, for our school system. Um, we did an activity and it opened our eyes. Well, we knew it, but it really opened our eyes. And I forgot the lady name who ran it, <laughs> but she put us in three directions on kindergarten. So we use, you know, expressive. Um, it's like, you know, we had to go to a poster and write down what you think or have you ever experienced or what you've taken out of this? So, of course, we all want the great academics. That's what we want. But at the end of the day, the bottom thing is relationships. Mm -hmm. You cannot get academics without relationships and knowing all your students, not just one. So us talking and discussing so much about the relationships from kindergarten to 12th grade or early college and understanding the culture that they come from the academics will come mm -hmm. so going to going through a different lens and not coming in and saying okay testing is such and such we gotta learn such and such go for okay the first two weeks of school i'm not caring about academics period let's get to know each other and i think some teachers are were tunnel vision for the academics part that it's like we got to get back into let's build the relationships, relationships, even with the older kids. I know they they've been through it. They know what school is, but learn them mm -hmm. so they can learn to love what you're teaching them. And the academics will fall through. Well, and we we kind of came to the conclusion that, you know, even as adults, we don't all know how to form relationships. Yeah. That's not something all adults know how to do properly. So that's something, you know, you just 
think that an adult at that point should know how to form a relationship with another human, especially if you're a teacher. But I don't think that's always the case. I think that's something we need to look at, too. Do they really understand when we say, hey, we need to form these relationships? Do all teachers understand what that actually means and what that actually looks like in the classroom? Mm -hmm. Um, and so whenever we were doing, we, we came up with goals that we were going to come back and we're going to implement. And we got so many wonderful ideas from one another. And our big thing was know your why. We got to do a book study while we were there on leadership. Um, it was called Teacheronomics. Wonderful book. Um, so the whole focus is you have to know your why, right? When problem solving, you have to know your why first. And we said here at Clinton City Schools, our teacher, our students are our why, right? We have to come up with our how and our what so that we can meet their needs to make sure that we have a fun, engaging, challenging, supportive, and loving learning environment that they, that they deserve. Um, then make sure that every single student has access to a good learning environment. Yeah, and we went on, I went on a boat for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, it, this was very fun, and to talk to the Coast Guard, knowing that they're experiencing some of the same things that we're experiencing mm-hmm. like financially and the shortage of people that they have to cover one long coast. Mm-hmm. Like oh, we're really not by ourselves, even though we're so yeah. tunnel vision and education, but it's not only us, but another thing, like um, a great thing that I took away from it is leadership and learning that it's not just, they say the verb. It was like, yeah. <laughs> I think it was like not just the word, but the adjective, what you do, not just mm-hmm. your title, it's what you do mm-hmm. and leadership. So with our our goals that we came up with, we're our accountability partners. Yeah. So <laughs> but, um, for two years, we have our little goals and we have our posters that we hang up in our rooms and we're going to meet so that we're um, updating each other and our teacher group, which I really love these group of people because mm-hmm. they are amazing and how we can keep up with each other and we email and update regularly. Like there's a girl I know from Midway. She's like, oh mm-hmm. yeah, basketball season. I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's good to hear, you know, the things you go through the same things that we go through. So it was, yeah, awesome. it was a wonderful experience. And they do give out scholarships and I've already mm-hmm. applied for one for next year. Yep, you get works. one scholarship a year. So we're gonna go back and make sure all the teachers know that. That, yes. that is a possibility that every year you can apply for a scholarship and they have STEM that they do there, reading, math. So we really talked about wanting to go to a STEM. Yes. Thought that would be a lot of fun. Get ready. But it was just a great opportunity. And they really do treat you just, you oh, know, with so much respect. Mm-hmm. And it's just, it was yes. a wonderful environment to be mm-hmm. in. That was awesome. Any questions for, for the two ladies? Part of your advocacy needs to be leaving NCAT the way NCAT was designed to be because there's been some talk about putting NCAT under the auspices of the 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 um, yeah DPI and not letting NCAT be that collaborative um, experience where teachers re- reinvigorate and, and really love the profession again that they're talking about putting it into DPI as a pipeline for just knowledge professional development that they want to do and that's not what we want it to become we want teachers to come back like you are coming back from that NCAT experience excited to be with like-minded people invigorated Nikki caught me what last week uh-huh. last <laughs> week when I was um, covering at Butler and she ta- we talked and we walked down the hall and we talked and we talked here and just about the experience and that's what we want NCAT to be so part of your advocacy should be making sure that you you let legislators know this needs to stay the way it is. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So any questions? Thank you so much. And thank you. Uh, yeah, great job, ladies. Uh, two great representatives of Clinton City Schools right there. Uh, again, thank you. Uh, y'all have a good evening. Thank you, ladies. Thank All right. Uh, uh, well, I, I don't. Board members, did you have any questions? I know I like hurried, hurriedly sped through my information. Were this was there any questions on my information? What we lost two two board members. You're ready to lose another one. <laughs> 
Okay. No question for Dr. Johnson. We'll take some opportunity or some time to go back through his items. There, it was a lot. And those dates at the end, I think we need to um, pay close attention to those dates. And if we can't attend all the events that are happening the rest of this school year, we'll try to attend as many as, as you can. Um, I just want to say congratulations to all the students and the staff for, for your hard work and your accomplishments. It's amazing. We talked yesterday at, a, at another meeting about we don't tell our story well enough, yes. right? We hear Dr. Johnson once a month um, with it with his good news, and Dr. Malanis puts out a newsletter every week, but that's all internal. We need to find ways to tell the Clinton City School story in the community, in the, you know, other communities and in, in the state and, and even in the nation, because we're doing some amazing things in this, this small community in this small school district. So we just need to find ways to get the word out. Thank you very much. Madam Chair, I want to expound on that just real quick, real quick, and I'll turn it over. We had an opportunity to hear from Governor Cooper today, and my whole cabinet was there. And one of the things that was shared is even though some people may be, um, hesitant to talk about public education almost everybody will talk about their local schools so you it might be hard to find people that'll jump on the bandwagon about how awesome public education is but that you can get your local community to talk about how awesome your schools are so when you start that conversation and when everybody starts that conversation in all 115 school districts then the word gets out there that Oh yeah, Samson Middle's great, Clinton High School's great. And then when they start talking about the Midway District and the Lakewood District, and when we're all saying the same collective voice that yes, public education is great and it needs to be protected and um, well looked after for many, many, many years to come. Thank you. I do, but I'll be quick. Um, some of our just information items, number two on there talks about um, the state board approved some money through SR3 funding for um, NCVPS summer school. We have 25 slots slated for our high school students. Um, they should have started already hearing announcements and being uh, reached out to by counselors. Um, it's accelerated summer courses. It is, the dates are there, June 27th through August 4th, six weeks. It's a full semester of class in six weeks. Yep. And it will be for initial credit only, but we are offering that to, uh, up to our students as another opportunity to do some, some coursework this summer. So it's funded by, by, um, ESSER, so that's good. We've already talked about the Dark Horse Fellow recipients. It was in Dr. Johnson's good news. Um, Read to Achieve, summer camp is coming for our third graders and some of our second graders who, who um, are going to be attending that. Part of the legislation says we must have six hours of mentor reading, and it cannot be the teachers in the building, not the IAs, people from the community that are coming in to support kids and teaching the love of, of reading. So there's a link there if you would like to sign up to come in and mentor read. Those are the dates. You'll see the time slots. You can do all three time slots on a day, which is the whole like lunch period, or you could come and just do part of it. So there's um, dates for you to sign up to come and read to our, our babies. And we had a lot of fun last year. We um, I did a full day and it was a lot of fun. Um, the last thing we've talked about before, and I just wanted to bring it back to your attention. I know we talked about it at the beginning of the school year, that economics and personal finance course that will start in Clinton City Schools next, um, next semester in the fall. Um, and then these are just some highlighted areas. We um, have sent two and the third person is going to be trained this summer. They had to attend 40 hours of training to be able to teach this course. It has to be taught only in the high schools. It cannot be taught on the college campus. So it has to be uh, high schools only. Um, I linked in, in in letter C the state standards because the course does have state standards that we must adhere to. So the standards are there. The next link is our course overview. So for the last five, six months, we've been working with the teachers who have done the training to create um, their course overview. It's not final yet, but I wanted to give you an overview of it before we left for, for summer, just so you knew what it was going to look like. Um, there is an honors section that will be available or honors sections that will be available for that course. 
They can also take that course in the summer through NCVPS if you have anybody who needs to do that. Um, guest speakers will be utilized in all units. And as we go through and we add in the resources for those courses, it may be, um, you know, Jerry Herring coming in from, from our car dealership and bringing a car and talking about how to apply for an auto loan. Just whatever it is that fits the unit, there will be guest speakers heavily utilized in all of the units. And then one of the things we're doing is um, EverFi. Um, has a financial literacy credential that we will allow our students to do. So they'll take the pre-assessment, they'll take the course, and then they can take the post-assessment. And if they're successful in that EverFi um, coursework, they'll have a financial literacy credential, which goes along with our strategic plan of increasing our credentialing for students um, by 3% this year. So that's just a real quick overview. Um, as you look through it, if you have any questions about the course overview or the standards, I can't do much about the standards, but I can kind of explain some to you. But definitely, if you have questions about the course overview, we can talk about that. And that's all I have. OK, any questions from Dr. for Dr. Malinas? Not a question, more of a statement that the financial literacy course, there is a ton of free money out there with all these financial institutions that they have marketing dollars that's set aside okay. for stuff like this. So any any local banks, obviously Miss Carol works at a it's not a community bank anymore, I don't <laughs> guess, but it's still family owned. Um, there's per capita, there's probably more banks in Clinton than any small town <laughs> I know of. So um ton of free money out there maybe there's some specialized stuff they could do right in terms of possibly even putting a fake branch at high school things of that nature there's a ton of free resources marketing out dollars out there mm -hmm. and so as they went through that 40 hours of coursework um part of that was they had to do their coursework with the north carolina economic commission and so they did they did get a lot of that information um each each district will kind of tailor it to meet the needs of their mm -hmm. students and so we have a lot of free reign in terms of like how we especially the personal finance piece the economics piece we don't have a whole lot to, to do with in terms of leeway, but definitely the personal finance piece, we have a lot of leeway with and how we implement it in our schools. And so you've got the overview. What we're looking for um, at this point moving forward is filling in when you look at it, there's a resources um, section on the template under each unit and that's where we're starting to fill in. You know, and if I have a person in my class who comes and speaks at, that we share those speakers with the other class. And so we just make sure that we've got a lot of community resources. And it may not be the same person every time I teach the course. I may be sharing that love with other community members. So it is heavily, heavily community um, supported guest speaker. So absolutely. Any other questions or comments for Dr. Malinas before we move? Thank you, uh, Mr. Ailes. Um, next item is technology and facilities. Mr. Lowe had to go to another um, event. Dr. Johnson, you're going to? David, you're going to do it? Okay, thanks. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm just covering a few things, uh, updates for the technology and facilities. First thing is solar PV at SAS is often exceeding consumption of power on the associated meter. If we take a brief look at this chart, I believe Bill covered it earlier that one thing that stands out is on Saturday and Sunday, it's just power is coming in and being supplied to Duke and we are being reimbursed for producing power and that should credit our bill. The next thing that we're looking at is Clinton City Schools will be working with Ryan for receipt of potential additional solar tax credit payment that is available due to changes made in the recent Inflation Reduction Act of 2022. I believe Bill also covered part of that. Grant submittals, we are, Clinton City Schools will be submitting a COPS SVPP grant application for eight open gate advanced weapons detection systems. Also, as far as our door access control for the schools, parts have arrived and door access control installation started March 27, 2023. Work continues at CHS. 
and College Street, but there are some additional parts for College Street that we're still waiting on. We do not have an ETA on when they may arrive. Um, can we go back to bullet number one? Yes. What is an open gate system? I'm not familiar with that kind of hardware. I haven't really been filled in on that, but I'm assuming it's just going to be like a metal detection system that they walk through. Is it the one we saw at the convention? Yeah. It's one very similar. Not the same one. It's just like it. It's just like Pepsi and Coke, just a different version. Okay, mm -hmm. that was really nice. They are not. Yes. The Evolve one that you guys saw, mm -hmm. we have to keep a subscription to it. Okay. And it's insanely expensive. Right. This one is just the same thing. You just don't have to have a subscription to it. Okay. And they're easily, it looked to be when we saw it that day, very transportable. Yeah. Oh, when it's extremely, extremely, yeah. extremely outdoor, indoor, whatever you need to go there. Okay. All right. So next section is uh, the roofing projects. I believe this, or no, this is received funding from the needs-based public school capital fund in the total amount of eight hundred ninety-eight thousand for roofing projects LCK, BAS, and SAS. Work at BAS and LCK are underway, and additional information regarding the public school building repair and renovation fund that we received. 2021-2022, we intend to receive another funding for 2022-2023, approximate value of 217000 Plans are to use these funds to renovate the entrance to LCK Elementary. And moving on to the next piece, cybersecurity. My last point, uh, MFA for staff Google accounts was enforced beginning May 1st, 2023. Those of you that have not signed up, I'm sure that you have seen it. Uh, this is a uh, intending to give our environment a much more secure setting you know if you're logging in you are indeed that person accountability so that is all i have for you today thank you david good job thank i thought you were just here to operate the machine i didn't know you were going to do the report thank you so much great job thank you as well <laughs> all righty next item is um dr van Alternative Learning Programs Highlight. Good evening, Madam Chair and other members of the board. Quickly, before I started within Clinton City, I was an ALP administrator for about six or seven years. Each year that I was an ALP administrator, I had a student to be murdered, killed, crippled. I wanted to tell the story about our students here in Clinton City. Tonight, we have heard a lot of people talking about if we don't tell our story then someone else will tell it for us. And we also heard about the amazing things that we have going on in Clinton City. And I think it's important to highlight our ALP students because as we all know, our ALP students sometimes get a bad name for themselves, not because of anything that they have done, but because the stigma that comes along with AOP. And we are working hard in Clinton City to change that stigma. And I think it's going along pretty well. So I'm excited to talk to you about some of our highlights. I will not read to you, but I will speak to you about each bullet. When you look at bullet number one, we're talking about proper time management and we wanted the students to have input and ownership into what they were doing at AOP. We have an overall goal at AOP from nine to two when our students arrive, but each student within AOP has their own personalized schedule tailored to their schedule in school. This schedule is updated daily by the student. We as a staff go around to check to be sure that they are taking ownership for their learning and that they are actually updating the schedule and on task. This has been great because each student knows their academic and behavior goals. Once again, we're always talking about tailor-made instruction. We are truly doing that in our AOP environment. We have implemented daily team, team building and mentorship. This is right after lunch. We have a character building activity. I wanna say that the work at AOP is not done by me alone, but it is done with a team. We do have a complete team now at AOP and it is a great team. So we do have mentors for our students and they meet each day, each day just to talk about some of the things that are going on personally and professionally. And when we say professionally, what I tell my students, you spend as much time at school as I do at work. So this is your job professionally. 
we prepare students for reintegration into a larger school setting. One of the things that we also have been working on, we want our students to know that just because you're an ALP doesn't mean that you're solely our student alone. You are still attached to your base school at the middle school or the high school, but we need for you to know how to act when you go back into those settings. Some of our students have been sent to ALP simply because they operate better and learn better in a smaller learning environment. But the reality is ALP was not somewhere that you were meant to come stay semester after semester, year after year, because you can't get the true middle school or high school experience if you do. We already talked about this briefly, but just to elaborate a little bit more, Post goals ALP. So what are you doing when you return it back to AL, when you return back to your base school? Because we do not want to see you return to ALP. We want to be sure that you are able to learn skills that will allow you to be successful outside of the alternative learning school environment and help you when you return back to your base school. And simply, what are you doing after high school? Have you thought about it? If not, it's time, even for our middle school and high school students. We try to emphasize that. We want to be sure that our staff, all our staff members are given their maximum effort and trying to tear down the lens that some situational circumstances have created when we're talking about ALP students. So we want our staff members to look at our students as students. They are not convicts and they're not inmates, regardless of what they have done. Fortunately, once again, we have no harsh situations as of today, tomorrow may be different, but we're going to think positive. As of today, we have had no major, major violent instances of anything in ALP with our students. I'm not going to worry about that. We want to keep that going. <laughs> yes. You know, military career opportunities brief led by Navy recruiters. We're having multiple recruiters come into the alternative learning environment. Now, with that being said, we're not only having recruiters come in to speak to our students. When we're talking about ALP students, sometimes if they're not going to college, what's the next thing we always do? We recommend that you go into the military. You know, you can go to the Army, the Navy, the Air Force. But as I told my students, most of the people that I know who have become multimillionaires have started their own companies. So let's start having a conversation about college and starting your own company and the military next week or sometime within the next two weeks we are having our local barber of supreme cuts come in and speak to our students about the barber trade we're going to have somebody come in and talk about cosmetology along with talking about what you need to do in order to enter college we had to be sure that all our staff members were on the same page with change, we know that sometimes people have a problem with their cheese being moved, the name of a book. So we actually started having synchronization meetings just to be sure that in the afternoon or in the morning, if there are any problems, we discuss those problems, problems that will prevent us from being cohesive, problems that will prevent the students from being cohesive. We discuss things that are going well, so forth and so on. But it's important to be sure that we all are speaking the same language. What I tell my staff, we may disagree behind closed doors, but when we go into public, we all need to speak the same language and we all need to be able to articulate the message and meaning behind our ALP program. Dress for success and interview preparation for our students. I will be sure to invite you all Board of Education members to the next Dress for Success and interview day. It was hilarious to hear some of the students answers when we finished our interviews i asked one student i said what did you get out of this he said the job <laughs> so that made me feel pretty good and if you look through our pictures and we have provided evidence of our work within aop we are doing stem activities with our students too aop by the nature of its design creates a situation in which students sit in front of a computer most of the day. One of the reasons we don't want students to stay at AOP year after year, semester after semester, is because they are not exposed to some of the things that they would get in a traditional or non AOP setting. Well, we're working on that here in Clinton City Schools. As you stroll through the pictures, you will see that our teachers and our students actually work on STEM activities and other things. The first photo was the picture of the entire staff 
we are complete and i love my team you should have seen them for dress to success day or dress to impress day i'm gonna have to spend a little bit more money on my clothes looking at the guys i work with and girls i work with they are doing a phenomenal job and i just want to highlight them the next picture that is from our career day where we had our navy recruiter come in and speak to our students our students were well behaved and they asked questions which i was really pleased with if we look at our next one we just have some more examples of pictures from alp day we can keep strolling through that is how to tie your tie day for dress for success we had our girls working and learning how to tie ties if you look at our student there on the left she even went to into the right excuse me she even went to church and tie ties sunday so that was special to me to see them using what they have learned at aop outside of the school and having people to come back and talk about it again we are our best storytellers on to the next please um importance of dress for success they were asking me questions such as what is my greatest weakness one student said i get mad easy and i go off i said don't say that <laughs> You don't want to create a situation in which the employer is looking at you in a negative way because you get bad and go off too easy. So we gave him a cookie cutter answer. The cookie cutter answer was, I have a hard time relinquishing tasks that I'm directly responsible for. I'm a workaholic. You know, he's going to use that one in the future. On to the next. <laughs> I post interview with our students. As you can see, our staff dressed up with our students as well. Look at my guys and girl there. They are sharp. Next, more interviews, different student. Everybody went through. And that's our STEM activity, you all. We set up stations. We had our employees go around and work with the students. We had students working with each other, peer coaching. It was a successful day. And we're making sure to use all of the space within AOP and get our students from behind that cubicle. If you have an opportunity, please do stop by, see the work that we're doing at AOP selfishly so you can take that work back out and brag on our students to everybody in and surrounding Clint City. Thank you for your time. Are there any questions? Yep. I just, I, oh. Go ahead. Go ahead, Carol. So with all that's going on there, um, these kids are having fun. Mm, they are. While they're learning and, and uh, learning how to adjust their behavior mm. so they can go back. But what I, and I hadn't been there to see mm. this, but my first thought is, just like in the past, they're not going to want to go back. Ah. This environment is, I mean, it's small. Um, Y'all taking time with them. That's not, I mean, let's keep it real. They're not able to have that in their mm -hmm. at their base schools. Mm -hmm. So how in the world, when it's time for them to go back, are you able to encourage them to go back? Because I can clearly see them going back, getting smart with somebody, because, you know, they can easily get to alternative for disrespect mm -hmm. by having a smart mouth just so they can get back in this environment. A couple of things that we're doing. So we're having conversations with our administrators about, the reason students are referred to ALP. You mentioned disrespect. Well, what is disrespect? Is the student using direct profanity, which is wrong, period, don't get me wrong, but are they cursing at someone or did they get scared because they saw a mouse or a snake and as some adults do like, oh my, and say something inappropriate. You know, that's not a reason to refer a child over to ALP. So we are having those conversations. But not only are we having conversations with administrators to make sure that they are accountable, we're holding our students accountable. What we say at AOP, love means accountability. I'm not gonna let you get away with something just because you think we are just so nice or just so given. No, we have high expectations for all of our students. So one of the things that our students had a problem with was sleeping in AOP because they're in front of a computer. Well, what is the solution? We don't have ISS, so what have we been doing in the past? OSS, send the students home. Well, if your kids are like the kids that I know, what do they want to do? They want to go home. Where are their parents? Their parents are going to work. Our students get out of ALP at two o'clock. So what we have started doing was we have after school detention now. You go to sleep, you take our time, we take yours. We had one student today, one student yesterday, and what they are saying is that we want to go back. It's not how it used to be. 
here at AOP. And what we say is we're not going to say anybody or anyone or anything was done wrong. We're looking towards your future. So what we're talking about is your actions of today because love means holding you accountable. So let's talk about your actions and what you did and how you can get out of here and stay out of here. So, so before I, I say my comment, Dr. Ryan, um, how have you seen with your approach the relationship change between AOP and our schools? Ah, uh, so the best way or the best example that I can give is when we did get our program fully loaded, for lack of a better word, fully staffed, the proper term, I didn't have to say anything. I had employees from the tech department coming back and telling me about the changes at AOP and how they were positive. I had other teachers. I had administrators. I had some of everybody within our school system talking about how great AOP was. So my question to that, well, what were they saying before? Because y'all didn't tell me all the bad things that were said, but you told me all the good things. But it felt good to know that the relationships are beneficial and meaningful relationships and shameless plug for myself. That's one thing I pride myself on. If I can do anything, I can build a positive and a strong relationship with anyone that's willing to work with me. And that is a reflection in our staff and our students as well. Every day wasn't easy, but we have more good days than bad days. Well, that, that that's great. I will tell you that today I had the distinct pleasure to go with uh, Pastor Emmanuel and Dr. Brunson. There were three of you. They told yes. me. <laughs> there were three of us. There were three of us. Uh, I try to be the one that they don't see a lot. Um, but I had the distinct pleasure of walking in there, seeing the students. You don't feel when you walk into that building, you don't feel the the tense. The Goodness. I don't know if this student is going to react this way or the other. There was there was a lot of calm. There was a lot of we know the students we have. We know what we're working with. We're valuing them as as students of our system mm -hmm. that we are. I mean, you have a holistic approach. Thank you. And I, and I appreciate your approach. Thank you. Because you are changing their lives, but at the same time, you're reimagining what their future is going to be. I heard you in your conversation mention it's not only about CTE. Right. And I understand Sampson County and Clinton City is run by agriculture. I get it. But you mentioned something very important. You have you have the military coming in, you have colleges coming in, and you're having these courageous conversations where students, even though they're going through this phase right now, because it's all, all it is is a phase. Mm. They're going through this phase. They feel that you're giving them the tools that they can change, walk out of AOP and become what they truly want to be. That's they hope. can reimagine that future. So, I mean, I, I walked through and I saw the ties hanging up mm -hmm. and, and that was on point. Mm -hmm. That was on point. And sometimes we lose our focus because we're dealing so much with the behavior. But what you're doing is understanding what has caused that behavior to modify with your relationship with the schools for the students to go back. So I, I truly commend you, your staff, because honestly, wow, I, I, shoot, I wish it would have been like that when I was growing up. Thank you. Because you couldn't even tell they were walking by them and say, Hey, what are you doing? Oh, I'm doing already. Mm -hmm. I'm doing this. Yeah. They were not <laughs> sleeping. Better not. And, and, and they were not, none of them were sleeping, but, at the same time, you've created a accountability measure where you're being held accountable, your staff is, but the product that we're returning back to the school is a, a student that's going to be successful, that knows where they messed up and what they got to do to keep moving forward. So, um, again, congrats to you and Thank your you. team because it, it, it was phenomenal. It Thank was, you. Thank you. Yes. We're a work in progress. Any feedback that you can give us, we welcome. In our weekly meetings, we talk about sustains, things that we are doing well, things that we should keep doing. And then we have, the, we're going to tell Dr. Van how we can make things better. But keep in mind, I said how we can make things mm -hmm. better. We don't have a conversation. This is what you're going to do, Dr. Van, and this is what we are going to do. It's what can we do. And what I tell them, even though they know I am the supervisor of the program, 
what's understood doesn't always have to be said. You all are my colleagues. Let's work together for the benefit of our program, because if they talk about AOP, they're talking about all of us at mm -hmm. AOP. So we want to be sure that we have good information, good stuff and good things going out of our program into our schools. Again, we are Clint City and we are Dark Horse family. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Van, Dr. Uh, Rodriguez, Ms. Worley, for your comments. Um, three of us had an opportunity. Actually, I visited all eight sites today, and you weren't there when we got there. But one thing I felt was a warm, um, inviting learning environment when we walked through the door. Um, um, the pastor was there and kind of greeted us. He, he had a funny story, though. He said um, the lights had gone out like for eight seconds before we got there. And then he said, when the lights came back on, he looked up and there were three board members at the door. He like, oh my goodness, <laughs> is that some kind of premonition? What's going on here? But uh, once he got over that, uh, I said, oh, we're just here to say, you know, happy teacher appreciation day and week. And uh, we appreciate what you do. Did you get your lunch? You know, was it delicious or whatever? So we did get a chance to walk around the facility. Of course, we ask, ask about you, but one thing that, um, Dr. Rodriguez and Pastor Emanuel and I talked about today was, is that building relationships. You could tell that those relationships have been built with the students. They are not, like you said, criminals or inmates or, you know, you're not afraid they're going to injure themselves or someone else. And that, I think, uh, leads the way to that, that positive outcome that you're talking about. So thank you for what you do. And, and we did miss you today. Thank you. They did tell me we had cabinet this morning. Then. I selfishly ate my lunch by myself, you know, with some of my good friends here at Clinton City. So we had a private working lunch, but I did go back over to AOP after our lunch and they told me about you all coming and delivering the meals. Lastly, what I want to say is thank you. As a former alternative at school, sole alternative school administrator, often our students were forgot about our staff they were forgotten about. We did not get the money that we needed. We did not get the supplies that we needed. We almost always had to fend for ourselves despite of telling the people who should know we just didn't get it. Here in Clinton City is different. Thank you all for checking on us. Thank you for not forgetting about us. Thank you for making my staff at AOP feel like they're just as valuable and important as every other member in every other school within our district. So thank you all. I appreciate you. Dr. Van, one thing, you have a passion for it. I, and, and, it, and it's truly evident. You need to share that passion. You need to share that passion. Because I truly believe just listening at you, you're not reading a paper. It's all coming from inside. And when, when we do job and work for a passion, it makes a difference on those children's lives. And, um, I don't know. The AOP term, we can have conversations, definitely. I don't like that term. We're we're refocusing folks, you know, re-changing, re reimagining lives. It's just, I can see it in you. I appreciate you, sir. Thank you. I appreciate you, too. All righty. Very good. Thank you. Once you teach me how to tie a tie, then you've been successful. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good luck to you. <laughs> Again, we do thank you. Uh, next item on the agenda is Board of, Board of Education. Of course, there, we still have the video subscription for those of you who need um, to um, get some professional development uh, this year. I don't know when that subscription runs out. Ms. Hayes can tell us it's probably going to be June 30 pretty soon. Summer conference information is there for you if you haven't already signed up. Like, uh, make sure Ms. Hayes knows about that. You have a calendar of our proposed meetings, uh, meetings, board meetings for next school year. Please look at that carefully. Um, Dr. Johnson and I have looked at it and, and made a couple of changes. And um, if you have changes of uh, meeting dates that are conflicts for you, Please let Ms. Hayes know because we want to approve it next month at our June meeting. 
Uh, in our next meeting, there were, were questions about that. It is going to be June 27th, Tuesday, June 27th at 4 o'clock right here in Sampson Middle School Media Center. There were some questions about it being on uh, June 20, I think. But for our finance department, I think they're going to need a later date. All right, June 27th at 4 o'clock. Any other items or comments from anyone in attendance? It is almost 7 o'clock, but we haven't met since March 28th, so I think we've gotten a lot accomplished. Other questions? I don't know if we have a, a quorum to adjourn the meeting or not, but we're going to go for it, right? All right, motion made by uh, Dr. Rodriguez. Ms. Worley? Ms. Worley's going to give us a second, and we're all in favor of it, so... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you for all you do. Have a good night. Good job, Madam Chair, board members, and cabinet members. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank and you. Principals and Ms. Taylor. And David. David did an outstanding job. David is the man. Yes, sir. Too long. You know what I did?